It's so stupid, it's positively brilliant. Yep, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots, and today's show is brought to you by Morgan & Morgan. Uh, don't be an idiot. If you've been injured in a car crash or other incident, call Morgan & Morgan, okay? Morgan & Morgan has recovered billions of dollars for thousands of people, and it's free. To hire them unless you win. Visit ForThePeople.com forward slash idiots for a free, no obligation consultation. Mm. We got more, Schultz. Oh, my bad, my bad, my bad. Yeah. You know, it's also brought to you by Spotify's Original Dissect Podcast. That's right. Today's episode is brought to you by the Spotify Original Dissect. Dissect. Dissect is a serialized music analysis podcast where they take a single album per season and examine the lyrics, music, and meaning behind one song per episode. Their new season is all about Kendrick Lamar's 2017 album, Damn! Unpacking the Pulitzer Prize winning album, note by note, line by line. Stream Dissect on Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcast, because great art deserves more than a swipe. I can't wait for that little pump. Uh, season. Really? You focus on? No, but it'd be really short. And listen, um, <laughs> we got some church announcements. What did you mean by Gucci gang? <laughs> <laughs> we got some church announcements. Yes, we do. Uh, Sunday, October 27th, mm-hmm. I will be in Milwaukee. I will be at the Love Varsity Milwaukee, Theater. I, I fuck with Milwaukee, Milwaukee too. Why, why do I fuck with Milwaukee too? I know why you do. Because I think that was the first market to syndicate. It was the first market guys, that syndicated right? the Breakfast Club, but I just like Milwaukee. Yo, dude. I'm the type of person that don't vibe. like Miami, but like Milwaukee. It's a vibe, bro. I like Milwaukee, yo. It's a yo. vibe, dude. Yeah. And I had to stay in Milwaukee for a week when we shot Catfish back in the day. Yeah. And I'm like, I fuck with Milwaukee. No, like Even though Milwaukee. the hotel was haunted, you know what I mean? It's but cool. that's why you like it. A few ghosts here and there. Who cares? What's a ghost? But I'll be there uh, at the Varsity Theater, 1 p.m., with uh, Krishanda Lee Perez having a discussion about, about black emotional health and wellness and wow. mental health. All right, Krishanda Lee Perez. She Krishanda got three Lee Perez. different races in her one name. Yes. So salute to Krishanda. And then on October 28th, I'll be at Winthrop University uh, doing an event called Tell Your Story. And it's mm. a conversation on improving mental health awareness with Michelle Williams, Marianne Williamson, and myself. Uh, it's free food, free conversation. It's God free bless. to everybody from 2 to 4 p.m. at Winthrop University. Me, Michelle Williams, and Marianne Williamson. So pull up on us. Got him. Okay? And then uh, Matador Tour, uh, Palm Beach. This Saturday, first show sold out, added a second show. Then um, next weekend, we're going to be in Chico, California. A few tickets left for that. Sacramento sold out. Then we're coming back. Connecticut, Norwalk, the Wall Street Theater. Then we got Boston on the 16th, Wilbur Theater. First show sold out, second show tickets left. And then New York, November 22nd, Town Hall, first show sold out. few tickets left for the second, but get those because they're going quick. Um, now let's start the show, my man. Let's start the show. Um, where do we start? Why don't we start with this? Um, Two dicks. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Dick talk. Dick right out the gate. Yeah, let's do it. Listen, man. I was. I, I saw. Tank. Can you break it down for me? Because I don't even understand what it is. Play the clip, Taylor. All right, so basically... Tanks? <laughs> tank sticks or tank sticks? Listen, I, all I know is he was on lip service. I don't know how the conversation started. Uh-huh. Um, but he basically said that if you have sucked two dicks, that don't make you gay. You got it? Okay, well, play it, play it from there, Taylor. Okay. Okay. This is, uh, but are you, like, playing it... I can play it too. So don't do any lazy editing. Are make, you playing it right now? I know you could. Look at Taylor producing. Damn. Not really. You know we wanted to talk about dicks, but you, you know this show. Are you ready? You've yeah. been working you with ready? us long enough to know we love to talk about dicks. Let's this clip should have been ready. Let's go. It's not loading? Let's dig into it, right? Okay. <laughs> that so he did. He sucked the d- once, right? Mm-hmm. And then he's like, I'm not sure if I liked it or not. Let you know me try it again. Let me try it mm-hmm. again. And then he says, you know what? It's not for me. Don't like the taste. You see what I'm saying? Don't so, like the taste. We're not talking he's, about chicken. We talking no, about chicken. What? Well, you know what? <laughs> know in his you, jaw. How you made a bar out of chicken <laughs> and dick. Because she's an artist at heart. Now 
natural. It comes natural. Um, but it doesn't mean he's gay. It means he sucked <laughs> twice. Okay. So just for the sake of your argument, that's okay. I know exactly what that is. Gay! <laughs> All right. I don't give a whole the fuck Tank talking about. Like, he needs to knock it off, bro. If I kill two people, I am a murderer. Murder. If I rob two banks, I am a bank, bank robber. robber. If I suck two dicks, I'm gay. At the, and at the least, even if you don't want to go all the way gay, at the least, bi. bisexual. You're definitely at bi. At the least. Yeah, you're bi. Now, here's the thing. If you sucked one dick. Curious. There's a curiosity. Still gay. But Cur- curious. Gay or Jace. Gay-ish. You're gay, gay-ish. Gay-ish. You're gay-ish. A new show brought to you by like Shonda Rhimes. Just, like you couldn't, yeah. it, by the way, by, <laughs> by the way, it depends on what kind of circle you got, right? Right. Because it's probably some guys that are progressive and they can sit oh, around. I thought you meant circle like the size of your butthole. No. <laughs> it's guys that they can sit around and they can talk about, you know, they was curious and, you know, they have that conversation. Cool. But right. then you might come to the other homeboys and be like, yeah, man, you know, I, I suck dick once. That don't mean I'm gay. Like, what? So, so this is the, the shitty. This is the uh, shitty thing about the conversation, right? People are assuming that there's something wrong with being gay. Who said that? No, there isn't. Yeah, there are just I, things that are straight, and there are things that are gay. A man sucking another guy's dick is a gay thing. It's a gay act. If a gay dude was fucking pussy, we'd be like, I think you might like pussy. You're doing some straight shit, That's bro. That's some straight shit, What's bro. What's up with you in straight shit? Yo, you out here straight, you're straight now? Yo, pussy talk? <laughs> straight. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't get the argument. Like, and The like, second dick confirms it, dog. Bro, The first come one on. is like, you should know, like, I don't need to try pistachio ice cream to know I don't like it. You can Twice. have that whole conversation with one dick. When you talk about two dicks, bro, you can't wake up with the taste for dick twice. All right? You know what I mean? Like, eh. It's so evident. Like, two dicks, you got a taste for dick. Also, also, like, when you try something new and you go, let me try I again really just to make sure. No. Let me try again just to make sure. It's because you liked it. Like, you take a bite of your girl's food. You're like, I don't know if I like it. Let me get another bite. Yeah. It's because yeah, you liked yeah, it, yeah. not because you didn't. Yeah, but it's a difference between getting two bites. And going back for another whole day. Also, dick. a dick suck takes a while. Yeah, it's a lot that go with dick sucking, bro. And it's your first and second dick suck, so you're not even going to be that yeah. good at it. So you need to jaw that thing down. Yeah, man. Nah, dude, you enjoy dicks. I was, I was thinking about this because, you know, we, we love head. We get head, right? Yeah. So we love head. But it was weird how that was phrased. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. Yo, we love giving each other head on this show. You know what I mean? But, okay, well, we got, some, we got Taylor and Sim in the room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to assume, but I'm just assuming at some point in your life, y'all have... Given fellatio. Exactly. You've so y'all know how y'all do it. Right. So as a guy, it's a lot that goes into it. Uh, yeah. You're jiggling niggas' balls. You're making them come. Like, that ain't, it ain't normal. <laughs> I'm serious. It ain't normal shit. You're doing your head. And when you do like this, bro, <laughs> like, like you a man, you do, you do like this. And you, uh, like, yo, it is what it is. Like, <laughs> I'm just saying, it is what it is. Like, you can't just act like, you know, you wasn't gay. You was gay, bro. You was gay, and it's fine. And 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 still are. No, that was not. See, that's a different debate. I I think if you, all right, let's just say you suck two dicks at some point in your life, right? Say you they, suck two dicks did, at eighteen. Okay, no, 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 no. What? <laughs> what? No, no, no. <laughs> what? Not eighteen. Like we're not talking about like you're homeless or something. Like you needed place to stay or like you you're going through. Dicks. In college, we're, you wanted to suck some dick. Outside of college, we're talking 27, good job, roof over your head, bills paid, yeah. no school loans, sucking dick? Yeah, you had a new year, new me year. <laughs> yes, you <laughs> did. <laughs> you had two new years. If, if you just decided at 27 to suck two dicks in that year, Sorry. that was a new year, new me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I want to say it so bad. Oh, say it. Say it. Say it. Say it. Oh, no, you can say, by the way, you can say that. Say what? That's a good, that's a, that word is fine. Which one? New queer, new me. New queer, new year. New queer, new year. Name that's of the podcast. A, by the way, you can say that. No, that's not even a slur no more. That's, in the, that's LGBT. I actually think queer means that. Don't queer does mean it. Queer, and it's also more than gay. Queer is like all encompassing. So, so it's you're, like, so like you're saying, yeah, so you're not just like strictly dickly. You're not strictly you, dickly. You're in a little bit of everything. You, I, I think, thought that was something else, though. We have a gay person. Who? Who? 
Does anybody want to talk to that gay dude? No, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm just Let's joking. Can I joke around? <laughs> Let's ask Joey. Yes, okay. this, this, that is it. Let me see. Definition of queer. Well, see, the dictionary says strange or odd. Okay, no, here it goes. What does the Q stand for in LGBTQ? To recognize this inclusion, a popular variant added the letter Q for those who identify as queer are questioning. That's yes. what the Q stands for, questioning. Or queer. It started as queer. But doesn't, it, but doesn't Q, questioning start with a Q? Also, yeah. Yeah, so our question, that makes perfect sense. Our questioning their sexual identity. So if you Bare have a minimum indeed, questioning. Yeah, if you've, been, if you've been straight all your life and then you say at 27, you decide you're going to suck two dicks, mm-hmm. that you would have to be questioning you're your question, sexual identity. 100%. Absolutely. So new queer, new year. New queer, new year. Boom! And again, it's 27. <laughs> Hit it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're not talking about struggling and then you suck a dick. That is, I think you could be struggling, suck a dick, and you're definitely, you could definitely not be gay. You're trying to get out of a tough situation. There go my man, Joey. What happened? Joey, I got a question Joey, for you real yeah, quick. Yeah, we got a question, bro. Is, is, is the Q it's about tank, LG, is it? It's about tank. <laughs> 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 Joey, Joey said it's about tank. <laughs> the gays have been talking. I'm Andrew, by the way. Nice to meet you, bro. We're talking to Mike, talking to Mike First here. of all, is, Q, is, is the, word, the Q word a bad word? Queer? Yes. No. Okay. Boom. We figured that. Well, it used to be Thank back you. in the day, but it's not anymore. No, it's not. Like, we claim that term now. Got you. And that means somebody who's curious about their sexual identity. Yeah, or it's like an umbrella term for the LGBT community. Okay. Like, I identify as like a queer male, also gay. So, que- queer goes first. Yeah. It's like, I'm a superhero, I'm in Marvel. Yes. Okay. So, if what, exactly. so, so you know what Tank said, is that, that's queer. Mm. Can you suck? So. Question: you Can you think? suck two dicks? Hold on, hold and I know what Joey straight. thinks that is for us, though. Wait, wait, what? what? <laughs> hold on, <laughs> slow down. I'm, You're I'm so excited. Slow down. No, I don't Take know how to, it easy. I don't know how to put the tip in. Jesus Christ! Slow down. <laughs> you get so excited. I'm like tank around dicks. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, is what he said queer? Because queer. The, when I looked up the definition of queer, it said somebody questioning mm-hmm. their sexual identity. Yeah. So I would think that if a guy has given fellatio twice in his life, but he doesn't right. identify as gay that would be yeah. queer to me personally i don't think it was gay okay that might sound crazy break but... it down break it down this is great so i know plenty of gay men that experimented with straight women that didn't make them straight it's a good mm, point great point now you here know? was here was our question where we broke it down we're not talking about like 16 18 right. maybe in college a little drunk mm-hmm. right 27 successful bills paid Mortgage, mm-hmm. taken care of, no school debt, nothing. Great job. January first, you want to try something new, new queer, new year. Two things new. Two, right. you Two new. Th- it's like That's one it. and yeah, then yeah, again. Yeah. Now is it a little bit? So it's more a gay. reoccurring thing. It's two times. Tank said two. Okay, we had a sequel. Tank said two. Mm, I don't think so. There's plenty of things to try. Like, I mean, hello. I don't think so. Here's a question: How old are you? I'm 22. 22. Yeah. Are you trying pussy? Hell no. That shit is gay. I'm over that shit. No. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, at maybe 14 yeah. or 15, you feel societal pressure to conform yeah. to a standard of right, living right. that uh, has been put on you, not who you are. And you got to make sure you are what... Yeah, well, I don't know. I'm, at, I don't, I'm assuming, but you got to make yeah, sure yeah. you are what you believe you are right right all the books you're reading are man woman all the movies you're seeing are man woman so there's this immense pressure for you to like see if maybe that is you as well social constructs tons of social constructs so you try it and you're like this is not for me right right but 27 you go back and dabble yeah there's some cue Mm -hmm. yeah that's a really weird way of saying it i mean we're not talking kind about of, no, I don't think so. you, Joey. Tell me what no, you no. think. Yeah, yeah. I mean, right. I see what you're saying. Like, I understand it completely, but I mean, like, if he tries it like over two times, then all right. He okay. might be a little gay. Okay, two so is it's a, the limit. No, it's a three suck law. Like, three it's suck a three suck law. <laughs> Just three like suck it, rules. Like how you got a three strike law, it's a three suck law. If you suck if two is okay, but if you suck three, mm-hmm. we gotta identify you as gay. Yeah. Okay, question. Now here's the thing. Getting head. Yeah. Far different act than giving. From giving. Yes. Yes. So if, if you found out that a guy in college got head from yeah. some other dude, what, I don't right. know, hey, he's drunk, some crazy stuff, who knows, right? 
Right. Way different. Bro, that's a good point. You're doing the yeah. the act is a commitment. It's right. the head, man. It's the look at it's, this it's is that. Like and, <laughs> it's, <laughs> then why we doing it right? <laughs> I mean <laughs> You got to the right person, but. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't think Tank was gay? No. Okay. I don't, I don't think so. I mean, I get it. I get where like you guys are coming from, but I don't think so. Like if it was kind of like a era in his life, I guess if he did it, that's like allegedly saying if he's experimented, if, if he tried it, you know, a few times or whatever and got over it and he's done with it. No, I don't think he's gay. But if it's a reoccurring thing, like if he tried it at 21, then went back to dick at 28. He might be a little gay because the stone is mine. Yeah, Last exactly. The, the taste stays for Last a while. Question. You know, like this, this blew my mind. <laughs> Wait, the what? It stays for a while. <laughs> it's like root beer. What? <laughs> it's got an aftertaste. I mean, a little bit. Depends on what you do. Whoa. Okay. So this is fascinating. Uh, no, they're know. just like, can you leave? <laughs> like, no, no, no. This is great. This is great. Now, here's another thing that I was told by gay and straight friends mm. of mine. Gay guy broke it down first. Yeah. He was like, the straight men that are into trans women mm -hmm. are straight. They're not yeah. into gay men. Yeah. Now, those guys who mm -hmm. are straight are blowing, if the penis is still there, right. the trans woman. Yeah. So, this is where things mm -hmm. get interesting, right? Yeah. Now, am I right about that so far? No, you're right. Okay. I get it. Because I have, I have actually- I understand the confusion, yeah. So, right, so, like, from a, a guy who is not aware that they're like, wait a minute, but if you're blowing a dude, mm -hmm. then, or if you're blowing a, having sex with a penis, you know what I'm trying right, to say. Right, right. Um, if you're giving head, that might be that you're into to dudes. Right. But they're specifically not hooking up with gay dudes, and they're hooking up with trans. Right. Like, I have comic buddies that are really into mm -hmm. it, right? Jim Norton. Yeah. Loves it, right? They don't view that as gay at all. Mm -hmm. Thoughts. I don't think it's gay either because those trans women identify as women. What they have in between their legs don't matter. Got you. Know? you. Isn't, what, yeah. isn't what's in between somebody's legs what determines whether somebody is gay or not? Isn't it like the same sex? They call it same sex relationships for a reason. Right, right. It's like such a weird gray area, honestly. So, like, if, so if a guy identifies weird, as but, a girl, yeah. but he's, he's like but Still fucking, has male, yeah. Yeah. So he still has the penis and he's butt fucking you. Mm -hmm. That's straight. Yeah. All right, 2019. Hey, we here, baby. <laughs> See? Like, no, we here. Listen, I, I, this, this, that, the only thing I didn't like about the tank conversation yeah. was tank saying it was homophobic. Like, I'm like, it's not homophobic for us to try to figure out yeah. how many dicks does it take to be, how many dicks you got to suck to be right. gay. That's it's a little, I don't, wanna know. I don't say it's homophobic. Like, nobody wants to be gay but, no more. Right. Yeah. It's a double standard. I don't think it's homophobic. You know, yeah. I'm glad he stood up against it, right? And didn't care what you know people said about it. You know, he got the gays on his side. So this is the new. How many licks does it take to get to the center of a okay. Tootsie Pop? <laughs> I'm saying, <serious. laughs> how real. many dicks do you have to suck to be considered gay? That's why. That's yeah. the question. Yeah, that's yeah. All. And in the cartoon commercial, it's like one, two. And then that's it. <laughs> the keep going. <laughs> right. yeah. it's, why do people act like the term "gay" is so bad now? Well, yeah. That's so what that's I'm starting to realize. That's like, the you don't want to be labeled thing. gay. That's, that's what it is. This is more about the label than the act. If we had no negative connotation with the label, that's it, exactly. it would be meaningless. He wouldn't right? have yeah. to speak about it. Or, or he'd be like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's kind of gay to suck dicks. Like, who cares? But the fact yeah. that he's defending yeah. the act is because he doesn't want to be associated with the label. Yeah, but but can't know, we blame him, though? Because people already started coming for him for it. Because there's you know? crazy prejudice associated. Exactly. You can't blame exactly. him. Exactly. Right, but it's. I don't think they came for him because of what the, what the act is. I think they came for him because of the confusion of saying if you suck two penises, right. you're not gay. You got to think people's whole lives they've been taught. Well, oh, wait a minute, a man being with another man is mm -hmm. gay. Same My thing. whole life, I've only sucked one penis, hoping I wouldn't be gay. <laughs> My, turns I mean, out you're, you're, you're really you're really <laughs> taking what people have learned throughout their whole life and ripping it up and saying nah that ain't the case mm -hmm. you know right. what I'm saying so it's more like confusion it's confusion yeah. that's all it is Yo, that, people do it. not like confusion about anything yeah when it comes to anything we do not like it we need for whatever reason we need shit in in order we need symmetry and the reality of the matter is like life is pretty fucking confusing mm -hmm. what do you well, mean it's just like people know? care too much that's the thing like what you mean? Well, there's a bigger social cost for guys right. when a guy has like a gay stigma, right? Because like if you eat some pussy in, in college, 
I'm not going to judge just you. Saying this, yeah. Right? Like, sure. I, I think it's awesome. But if Guys I suck some hot, dick yeah. in college, you're like, I yeah. don't know if I want to be with that guy who sucked dick. So if women weren't so homophobic, we would probably be way more open. <laughs> nah, <laughs> Chos, I agree with you. It's really women fault. Because what did y'all I tell you? Right. It's, 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 it's women yeah. fault. Prejudice. Y'all won't. Right. Y'all won't. Y'all won't won accept it, man. Nobody. No man can tell y'all they used to suck dick, and That's you you gonna be like, but it's just like all we want to do is suck some dick out here, ladies. Why can't you accept us? That was that was on, by the way. That was on insecure. Wasn't that on insecure? Yeah. yeah. That was a, that was on insecure. This guy, guy Molly was dating. Had had went down on a dude in, in college or something like that and she didn't want to date him no more because of that it's true Joey thank you for talking yeah, to us man course. thank you appreciate you man let's appreciate pay some you, bills Joey. of course uh, if there is something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals, BetterHelp Online Counseling can help. BetterHelp offers licensed professional counselors who are specialized in issues such as depression, anxiety, relationships, trauma, anger, family conflicts, LGBT matters, grief, self-esteem, and more. Connect with your professional counselor in a safe and private online environment and get help at your own time and at your own pace. Anything you share is confidential and it's so convenient, okay? You can schedule secure video or phone sessions as well as chat and text with your therapist. If for some reason you are not happy with your counselor, you can request a new one at any time for no additional charge, okay? And best of all, it's truly an affordable option, all right? Our listeners, our brilliant idiots family gets 10% off your first month with the discount code IDIOT. So why not get started today? Go to betterhelp.com slash idiots then simply fill out a questionnaire to help them assess your needs and get matched with a counselor you love. That's betterhelp.com slash idiots. We might as well do the other one, show. I think so. Since, since Chris got us so caked up with ads. Okay, Chris trying to keep his job. Chris trying not to get fired. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, did y'all did y'all see the uh, did y'all see the uh, the people commenting on the limes thing last last week? No, I didn't see it. You know, it's not even limes. What do you mean? It's Lyme disease. Oh no! But I. That's Googled. why you haven't no, cured no, 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 your no, no, disease because no, no, no. you don't even know how to spell it. You've been googling the wrong. But thing. I googled. See, I, I actually did this. Okay. I was like, okay, what were the two things we were discussing? So I googled China and limes, and there really are China limes. <laughs> like, they, right, Chris? Yeah. It's a fruit. It's China limes. <laughs> so I just, I was like, oh, this is what God wanted. <laughs> so, I China, so I made it China limes. So that was me. Uh, son. Anyway, look, guys, if you want to get some China limes, you should get them Postmated. Postmates supports this podcast, okay? Other than your absolute best friends, who could you ask to bring you red wine at 4 p.m., China limes at 9 p.m., and a breakfast burrito at 8 a.m.? Postmates it is. Postmates, your personal food delivery, grocery delivery, whatever you can think of delivery service all year round. No trips to the store. Don't leave your fucking house, okay? You don't even have to know where the store is. Postmates will find it. Get you your items. Bring them to you. You download the app, iOS or Android. It's free. Browse the local restaurants, businesses, track the delivery, the whole nine yards. 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Postmates will bring you what you want within the hour. That's right. Within the hour, you have it. Anything you're craving, they will deliver it. They got more than 25,000 partner merchants. So for a limited time, Postmates is giving our listeners $100 of free delivery credit for your first seven days. You think you can spend $100 in seven days? Do you think if they give you $100, you can spend it in seven days? We'll fucking do it. I don't feel like shit for groceries, bro. You think? Hundred dollars, a hundred bucks. You got a family though. Like there are yeah. people that have no family, and a hundred dollars gets you a lot of shit. Shit. You know how much hummus? Really? Yeah, I don't get anything. Hummus, but hummus. is expensive. For seven dollars, Sabra. Yeah, I fuck with Sabra. Sabra. Sabra's dope. Yeah, we're cultured. Bro. It's a fake healthy snack. Don't tell nobody. Point is, hundred dollars free, seven days suspended. Go do it for a limited time. You just hit that uh, offer code idiots. You just use our offer code idiots. Download Postmates with the code IDIOTS. Okay, back to the show. Back to the show. Listen, um, what are we talking about here? Oh, man, what, what did we have? We had another thing that we were going to discuss as well. Oh, you had a, an eventful uh, YouTube week? What happened? Oh, um, man. <laughs> 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 what happened? Bro, first video up, you go viral? That I wasn't think. the first video, though. Well, still, it, it is. It's been a month. 
I, th- I, you know, whatever. I'm it's not been gonna. A month. I th- I'm just so stoked. For Almost you. a month, maybe two weeks, two, three I love weeks. It. I, had the I love it. Up. I think it's great. I, I'm so excited for what for what's to come with this. I thought uh, I, I I enjoyed the conversation with Gucci Man. You know what I'm saying? Um, the reason I enjoyed the conversation with Gucci Man is because uh, I am at a place in my life where it's all about mindfulness. And it's all about mental health. Mm-hmm. And I've always been intrigued by stories of growth. That's mm-hmm. why I've always gravitated towards the Nation of Islam. Right. That's why I've always gravitated towards the autobiography of Malcolm X. You know, just just any story about transformation and evolution. And I mean, in hip hop, there's not too many stories you can look at, you know, and, and really see evolution in a real way. Like when it comes to Gucci Man. You know what I'm saying? If you remember Gucci Man way back in the day when he was, you know, on the lean heavy and he was, you know, wild and be fighting in the mall and right. fighting women. And, you know, right. like just why he was a, why he was a wild out of control dude. And to yeah. see him grow and evolve into somebody that people look at as goals. Yeah. In a lot of way, a lot of ways, especially body goals. You know what I'm saying? Cause you saw what he used to look like physically. And you see what he looks like physically. Now I just wanted to have that conversation with him. And plus I've seen him say little things like, you know, he, Malcolm Gladwell is his favorite author. And he did a conversation with Malcolm Gladwell before. And I think a lot of that stuff goes under the radar a lot of the time. So, so I was like, you know what, if I sit down with Gucci, he's put out 101 projects. What do I want to talk to Gucci man about? All I want to talk to him about is his growth mm. and his evolution. Mm. And I think if, I think for, for, for a 59 minute, interview 54 was about pretty, mindfulness yeah it's very mindful yeah, it was about mindfulness there's a little reg- regression at the end the, well, the last five but like he said throughout the interview he's a he's a work in progress dude before we get to the last five i was i never underestimate successful people mm-hmm. right i don't care how um Silly people present themselves as, you know, like the Seth Rogans of the world or these people who are like, yeah, I'm a stoner, bro. I'm fat. I just eat nachos all the it's time. There's something there. I'm like, bro, yeah, yeah, Adam yeah. Sandler is like always in like, you know, ripped clothes, khakis, but you're yeah. worth hundreds of millions of dollars. I'm like, eh. He knows what he's doing. You know what you're doing. Yeah. And, and the same thing with Gucci. I'm like, hmm. You've signed all these artists that have ended up being successful. You saw them in early deals. You, you've been instrumental in like the, you know, creation, at bare minimum creation of a genre mm-hmm. of music, right? Um, but also like made million millions of dollars doing it. So I'm like, now this guy's got to be really smart. I just haven't really seen in depth interviews, maybe with him being like sober, per yeah, se, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But he was talking about like coping with life stuff in a really intelligent way, right? Like there was a moment where you go where he was like, you know, yeah, I just block it out. Or I just become numb to it. He was talking and about then, death. He talked about his father dying, his mom dying, his homeboy Shorty Low, and asked him, did he give himself a chance to grieve? Because all this was yes. fairly recent. Yeah. And he said, um, and we can play the clip as well, but he was like, because it's my content, but he was like, you know, um, he doesn't grieve. <clears throat> and he, and he, he, goes, he said he kind of just blocks it out. Yeah, I, and I, 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 I asked him, is that out. healthy? And he said, I don't know if it's healthy, but it's practical. Dude, that line right there. I don't know if it's healthy, but it's practical. Yeah. Certain people don't have the time for health. Certain people don't have the luxury of health. Mm -hmm. In a lot of ways, we live in the first world, so we have it. But like mental health is a luxury. I'm going to sit here and I'm going to think about my thoughts and think about how I feel. There's motherfuckers out there like, how do I get away from this tornado? Absolutely. How do I get away from this hurricane? Absolutely. And like, I just thought it was such a poignant observation about like what he had probably done in his life to get through these things. I liked it because I think that's what we're all trying to do. We're just all trying to find practical ways to make it. You know what I'm saying? Whether it's practical ways just to make it through life, you know, financially or practical ways to make it through life mentally. Like that's what therapy is, right? Therapy is a practical uh, resource that you can go do to try to be better mentally. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, Cutting out carbs is a practical way of being better physically. I think that's what we're all trying to do. But you have to have self-awareness to even know that you want to improve, right? Yeah. And that's what I got from pieces of this interview. I was like, Huh, this guy recognized certain behaviors. Like at one point he says, and he goes, uh, I I realized I had to level up, or I forget the exact words. Like I had to learn more things. I had to get more skills. Yes. That is a poignant. Yes. It's a poignant observation about your own life. Very, very rarely do people go, I need to be better at this. Man, salute to my dude, Shaka. Sing, 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 whore, sing, whore. I'm, pr- I know I'm pronouncing Shaka's last name wrong. Forgive me, my brother. But he's a brilliant author. Uh, he, 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 he went to jail 
for, for, for murdering somebody back in the day, but he's like rehabilitated his life, reformed his life. I need, we need to have Shaka on the podcast. He'd be a great guest. Uh, but we did a panel together at A3C and Shaka was talking about when he was locked up. Okay. And um, he said his, his, his warden, the warden or the CEO was a bumbling idiot. Mm-hmm. And Shaka said, I will never let somebody who's intellectually inferior to me be able to tell me what the fucking do. Huh. And he said at that moment is when he decided to add more skills. So he just started reading and just educating himself because he wanted to add more skills to his repertoire. Huh. And that's what you have to do in life. Some yep. people just get comfortable and feel like, no, I'm going to make it with what I have yep. right here instead of always trying to better themselves. Yeah, bi businessmen add weaponry. Absolutely. And, you know, weaponry doesn't have to be tools of violence, right? It can be just tools of success. You know, like, I guess Gucci realized in the world that he was operating this 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 music world. He's like, I need to be more refined. I, I mean, need you, to be you need to be more to, refined in the real, in the world world. In the world world. Music world, he had it. As a wife, as a husband. Yes. You know what I mean? As a family. But also, like, physical health, like all these types of things were part of this greater thing. It wasn't like, I think the, the narrative that we were kind of fed was he went to jail and you work out a lot in jail. So then he got abs and then people liked his pictures on Instagram. So he's starts like, here. I'm gonna keep the abs. You're right. But it starts here. And you got, I, I saw that. I'm like, no, nah, this is up here. Mm -hmm. No matter how, how, how physically fit he got. No, this is, we, do you it's remember, good. do you remember Gucci man? Yeah. If you remember Gucci man, then you know, it started right here. Mm. So I mean that was the, that was the thing that I was um, most intrigued by. I thought it was great. I think you guys should all go watch it. See the God, uh, YouTube, YouTube. Yeah. See the God. Thank you. It's got almost like two million views, but who's counting? I mean that's not. I mean whatever. Uh, it's uh, two million. You're like no one point one in less than twenty five. But who's counting? That's but, like yeah. But it's nobody, it nobody, it nobody cares about I mean, stuff like that. Yeah, it's a two mil. It's a light. Yeah, it's uh, a light two mil. Uh, it's a light two mil, bro. It's not on. even. It's not even that big a deal. Come on. You know what I mean? And, and I see people, uh, you know, asking why would I do that interview. And let him talk about... Well, let's talk about the last five minutes, right? That's, okay. that's what you're bringing in. Yes. Right? Yes. So now you're referencing it. Yes. The last five minutes, he had some choice words for Angel Lee Angela. and DJ Envy. Absolutely. And you got some pushback from people there. Like, why would you keep that part of the interview intact? Yes. And you're thinking? Because I'm not into censoring artists, especially when it comes to responses to people in the media. Like if you're a magazine outlet, if you're a radio personality, if you're any type of cultural critic and you <laughs> say something about an artist, that artist has every right to respond. He has every right to reply and you cannot control the narrative of said artist. Like, look, I could have... I could have edited plenty of things out of Breakfast Club interviews. Those aren't live. I could have I could have edited Beanie Siegel. Mm. I could have edited Fredro Starr. I could have edited Birdman. But why would I do such a thing? Like, if I'm on the radio giving out Donkey the Days and giving my cultural critique of people, who am I to tell that person how to respond or how to reply? There are probably interviews that you were not uh, at at the Breakfast Club where maybe artists had choice words Definitely. for you. Definitely. That's absolutely happened before. And I imagine those choice words were kept in the interview. Of course. And you did not personalize that. That's what those people not at felt all. like saying. I don't think that any interviewer should be responsible for what an interviewee says. Do you think you're being held responsible for Gucci's opinions? Because about... me. If it was what any, if, if that was any other interviewer in that interview, it wouldn't be an issue. But being that me, to, Angela, yeah. and Envy work together, you're supposed they, to protect them or something. I, like that. Yeah, I, I don't know where I don't know where people get that from though. That I'm supposed to protect them. Like he's an artist. He had an opinion on something that they did. Like you know, they went on Breakfast Club. They did 20 minutes of Breakfast Club Court. They said things about Gucci. They said things about Gucci's wife. You know, mm -hmm. or, or played things that rappers said about Gucci's wife. Gucci had felt the way about that. That's that. Like, I don't think it's that big of a deal for anybody to be tripping saying, you know, like, oh, well, Charlamagne shouldn't have done that. Like, no, I am an interviewer. I am a, a personality, a media personality. My job is to be as biased as possible, which is very hard to do. Unbiased. Unbiased yeah, yeah, as yeah. possible. Well, maybe I did say it right the first time. God knows what he's doing. <laughs> <I'm just playing>. <laughs> <laughs> but... <laughs> What is it is it is my job to be as unbiased. Here's what brother Leonard is saying. Shut up. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> hey, I, I really wanted to hate on you for that. I was like, why would you interrupt this flow? But it was pretty good. That was a good one. That was pretty good. But no, it's, it's my job to be as unbiased as possible. But right. it, 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 it's simple, simple as possible, and and for for everybody to get it clear. Yeah. I just don't feel like 
you can say whatever you want the artist and 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 then try to control the narrative of what the artist says. You can't, I can't do that. Don't we criticize news organizations for this all the time, right? Don't we criticize like a CNN or a Fox News for like just harping on their narrative and like cutting certain things out of the news Absolutely. cycle that could affect their narrative? So if we do the exact same thing, we're guilty of it. That being said, I also understand a coworker that you have time with and invested with feeling like, yo, why didn't you protect me from that potential embarrassment? You had the ability to protect me. Protect them how though? By cutting it out, by not including it. That being said, that's if you, censoring the artist, right? It, and then it, the art, then that artist goes and says, "Yo, I did this interview with Charlamagne, and he cut this out next one." Who wants that? One hundred percent. No, it, it, you're in a very yeah. tricky. You're in a very and, tricky. And, and situation. by the way, I've cut things out for for artists before, right? Meaning, like, if an artist says something that I know is gonna get you're gonna them get fucked them arrested, up, blah blah blah. Yeah. Are any arrested? Yeah. Fucked up? Lose a deal? Like, bro. Cut that out. Chop Let me it. save you from yourself. Now, that's that's a recent practice over the past few years, right. only because we've seen the climate of things. You know what I'm saying? Right. Back in the day, guns are blazing. Everybody, right. host, guest, whatever. <laughs> yeah. But now it's like, <laughs> bruh, yeah. you know you can't say maggot. Right. You know what I'm right, saying? Right, like, right. they're going to snatch a show off the air. Like, let me save you from yourself. Because some of these brothers and sisters, they just don't know. Right. Because they're young and they're new to this. But I know where that's going to go with you. So you, know? you, you thought in this specific interview, nobody needed saving from themselves. Nobody's career but, but, was By the way, by the way, by the way, I did quite a bit of editing. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, yes. It was much longer than... Uh... No, just that last portion was... was it was crazier. Yeah. Oh, so that was the PG-13 version. Yeah. PG-13, yeah. Absolutely. It was, yeah. So, yes. I still protected in a lot of ways. I see what you're saying. So, yes. in your mind, in your mind, you're going, you should have seen what really happened. That's part of it. But, all, but, but right. even bigger than that, because I probably wouldn't have done that if it wasn't the situation of, my coworkers, you know what I'm saying? But in the bigger, the bigger scheme of things, well, right. no, I would have done that even if it wasn't my coworkers, just because it's just, it's, it's, it's like, it's, it's language. It's language that can get people fucked up in certain situations. You again, know what I'm saying? So you're protecting against cancellation. Absolutely. And, yeah. and, and, but just in general, once again, I just don't think that you can say whatever you want about artists and then try to control how they respond. I can't control how Birdman comes in the studio when I say, yeah, I don't know why people sign the Birdman. He don't pay nobody. It's, I can't control how yeah. Fredro Star reacts to something I say. I can't control right. Beanie Seagull. I can't control if somebody wants to send people to jump me in front of the radio station for something that I said. Like, that's that's right. out of my hands. Right. So if you're going to be in this game, we talked about being on the court earlier. Yeah. No, that was another podcast that we recorded. But we talked about being, we, we talked about being on the court. Yeah. Right? If being you want to get in the kitchen, you got to take the heat. You got to take sensor. the heat. You got to yeah, take yeah. everything that comes with it. You can't throw certain things out. And then when that person wants to respond, whether they respond with truth, whether they respond with lies, whether they respond with fact, whether they respond with fiction, however they respond, you got to eat that. Yeah, I thought, I don't know, I, I watched and I was like, I can see how someone could be sensitive about this situation. But like, I was also watching going, I was also watching it as you have like somewhat of a pacifier. You're like, I'm gonna get you guys on the phone and this, that, the other. Like, I don't think that you were riling up. Bro, I didn't even ask about it. That's right. He, it was he like, part, you were trying he, to finish the interview almost. I'm like, I wasn't even out. I'm like, shit, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, here we go, god damn it. Yeah, we're going to see how much you don't give a fuck. Right? I'm like, shit. You thought I changed. Like, and he said it, though. He was like, nah, we ain't about to just be like on some no. Yeah, like, Yo, see you later, Gucci. You know what I'm saying? Thanks for coming. Nah, it, 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 he had some shit he wanted to get off his chest. Uh huh. What I'm supposed to do? Yeah. Listen, I don't believe in centering the artist. Not when it comes to stuff like that. Right. I just don't think that's fair. I don't think that's good journalism. I I, don't, I think that shows a lack of integrity. Right. I'm just not about that life. If I say something, artists have every right to respond, and they have various platforms to respond on. And it doesn't matter who that person is sitting with. Because what, yo, what if Gucci would have came to the Breakfast Club? You think his wording would have changed? 100% no. <laughs> It probably would have been worse because he's right there right. with the with the individuals. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So you got to keep that same energy. Same, like everybody got to keep the same energy at all times. Yeah. That's all. That's that's all I'm saying. So why is it is it is it worse because it was a one on one? Because if it was that 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 same shit could have went down in the Breakfast Club. I mean, it's worse because it was successful. What do you mean? I mean, if two two hundred people watch it, nobody cares. 
Yeah, if too many people watched it, I'd have shut down my YouTube. Like, this ain't for me. Like, this... I'm more of a radio guy. Uh... <laughs> Y'all can listen to me on the Breakfast Club. Yeah, but that's uh, that's the moral of that story. Yeah, no, yeah, I think it's reasonable. Mm-hmm. You know, I guess. Hmm. Yeah, I'm trying to think, like, how I would react in this situation if somebody was, someone's being critical of you. But if they're like... Yeah, I th- I think my gut instinct would be to defend you, but there's also my like, gut instinct would be to defend anybody if it was inaccurate information. Boom. What what Gucci did to me was just more of an opinion, and it was a response to something. A response to something that he heard from them. So I can't tell that man how to feel. Yeah, yeah. You can't be. Like, you're not offended by. Yeah, I can't do that. Exactly. Yeah, he yeah, said yeah. that they 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 did what they did on Breakfast Club yeah. Court. You know. Uh, Played the Yo Gotti interview where Yo Gotti was talking about his wife. I don't know that one. What was that about? With the, I, I, I don't know. I guess they had a relationship back in the day, but Gucci was responding to that. That's his feelings toward what they did. Yeah, it's like, why are you... He's like, yo, you embarrass me on, on this platform. He just wanted to know what's up. So that there was no correcting that needed to happen. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the moral of the story is, uh, I hope y'all enjoyed the Gucci Man interview. Oh, okay. yeah. But listen, let's pay some bills, uh, and then we'll come back with uh, the 85 South Show, okay? Carlos Miller, Chico Bean, and DC Young Fly. Yeah. Guys, um, this podcast, this podcast, why do I have an English accent? I said, uh, it's been brought to you by Honey. Let me explain what Honey is. Now, if you ever bought something online and then you find out that you couldn't have gotten it for less once that happens, you feel like you could be overpaying every time you shop. Luckily, I got the Honey, the free browser extension that saves you time and money when shopping online. Honey scans the internet for coupon codes and other discounts. Then it automatically applies the one with the biggest savings to your cart at checkout. Think about that. It knows about every coupon code, sale, or discount at over 20,000 sites like Amazon, Macy's, J. Crew, Domino's, Sephora, White Women, Target, and more. Just shop like normal and Honey finds the savings for you. I can't think of anything that is easier to save money doing. You literally have to do nothing. They find you free money and then you get it. There's no reason not to use Honey. It's free. It installs on your computer in two clicks and it'll save you money so you can treat yourself to something nice. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash idiots. That's joinhoney.com slash idiots. All right, let's get back to the show with um, our very special guests here. I'm so excited to have them. I'm a big fan of them. Give it up, guys, for the 85 South Show. All right, we got some, uh, I guess you call them special guests. They just more like fucking family and friends. You know what I'm saying? Man, yeah. Stop talking like a city girl, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, just like a little thought. Exactly. Chico, more like family and friends. <laughs> <laughs> they cool or whatever. Chico B, Carlos Miller, DC Young Fly. You the 85 motherfucking yeah. South Show. Yeah. You know, the streets have been asking for this for a long time. Long time no, we when y'all came before, I wasn't here, right? We might, yeah, we yeah. been Sean's crib. How is everything, though, man? Y'all look like y'all really are prospering. Y'all got a 20-team entourage. Hey, man, that's how 20 man work, entourage. Bro. You got to let everybody play their yeah. position. That's right. how it works. What you know other I mean? positions? Shit, well, how the, how the hell you orchestrate a show and a sold out theater show? Well, look, you got to have a guy who know how to fix the audio. Mo you got to have right. a dude with a regular camera. Yeah. Then you got to have a dude with a motion camera. Right. Then you got to have a dude That's with like sound. a tripod. You did? Yeah. Then you got to have a nigga that making sure that the white folks ain't playing with the right. money. Right. And then but you got to have another motherfucker who know how to you, find a parking spot yeah. anywhere. Yeah, right. you, and, but Somebody usually, with a credit card. Carlos had a lawyer. You had your yep. attorney with Somebody you. Somebody with an Uber lawyer. account. Right. Gotta have your lawyer. Somebody gotta have an Uber account. Right. You know what I mean? And you usually go into these venues and they have people that's already in place that do that work, but we show up with people that do the work for us. Right. Y'all search that guy people. in the corner, man. He wants to say right. right. oh, no. <laughs> We don't search the guy. Like we bring our own man. guy and put well, him then. in the corner because we know what he got on him. And, and, and it's all black on our team, too. I see. Yeah, yeah. we got one minority. We got an Asian dude. 
That nigga black, man. I know, but... He said nigga what you mean one day? minority? Nigga, I mean, black yeah. not minorities. But I'm saying, like, other minorities. Oh, got you, got yeah, you, got you. We try to create opportunities for everybody. Our podcast ain't shit, man. We really... Y'all podcast ain't shit, y'all. Y'all podcast ain't shit. What's that? All we got is numbers. That's it. That's good. Nigga, look at y'all in the studio. No! Yeah, but that's how I operate. That's how I why white people keep the money. See, oh. they put it in the studio. <laughs> they don't want to give us niggas no money. <laughs> yeah, and plus we from the hood. I mean, right. it, it look good, but trust yeah. me, man, we are we are budgeting over here. Yeah. We made it. We made side they agreements they with everybody They want niggas to look like they team. being successful. <laughs> so everybody just traveling. Everybody just traveling for the love. Nah, hell yeah. no, nah. Nah, nah, nah. Just out here doing it for hugs and kisses. At one point it was for the love, yeah. but you do it for the love to get to the point where you can make some money. And the right. people that stuck around, it was consistent and persistent in what they did. Most they definitely. were able to see it come to a point where you actually make some money from doing it. Hell yeah, yeah it's yeah. dope when you can uh, when you tell your partner to quit his job and, and come kick it full time. You Absolutely. know, and do what you do. Look at my man Roy back there. Yeah, Roy, what's happening? Exactly. Roy, Roy looks like you sell me. You told my motherfucker to quit their job. Well, I think they're gonna quit anyway. Uh, <laughs> look, you must be getting you must be getting some money, a lot of money. No. Not even just this show money. You still selling drugs, ain't you? No, it's not that I'm getting a lot of money. I just go to work every day, like every day. I seven days in a week. I got like fifteen <laughs> jobs, bro. I, I I'm a comedian. He signed on DC on money. TV show. I, don't, I got a podcast. <laughs> I got a website. Yeah, I'm. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm just trying the merch, to acquire the merch booming currency. For y'all. Merch yeah. is booming. Sold out shows. Yeah. They're all this shit, Talk man. Talk your shit. We just trying to become... I ain't rich. I got a few dollars. Beat, beat, beat. You know what I'm saying? Entrepreneurs for for a long time. You and and you I'm just saying? gave away all that money. You fucking, you speak on success. 250000 My neighborhood needs some of that money, fool. Come on, man. Well, I, I gave it to an HBCU, South Carolina State University. For so, real? Yeah. That was your money that you gave? You said what? That was your no, money. No, you heard what he said. Was that my money? Yeah. Who money was it? Wait, I, I don't know. You know what? I'm, I'm, Bro, you I'm, I'm talking to your team. You he didn't even I'm, know you had money no, like I that. No, I like that. I'm going to tell you something, though. It's a little insulting, because y'all said it to me earlier, too. Like, I ain't no nigga had that kind of money. No, I, I didn't say that. No, no had, hold, hold on. Let me explain. Let me explain. Kind of it's no, not that we didn't. Rich. I we didn't think that. Yeah, we're not. Yeah, that's exactly You had a number one selling book. You know how many niggas got to buy that shit to read it? It's not that we didn't think you had that kind of money. It's just that think you would give it away. I mean, that's my money. That's my mother's alma mater, uh-huh. South Carolina State University. Yeah. Right. So as a way to honor my mother, I, I opened up a scholarship in her name. And you my, didn't even go to college. No, not at all. That was not at all. So, so that two hundred fifty give you a degree for so that two hundred fifty gonna be like for the scholarship. So uh, yes, the way to use that two hundred fifty. Yeah, it's, it's all the way I got it set up to qualify for the scholarship. You got to be a black woman from South Carolina, right. majoring in either English because that was my mom's. Major, you see that Andrew Show? Mass yeah. communication. Even the black man is holding the black man back. You got to be a black woman. You can, you, can, you can split it up to how many different Nobody women wants to see the black man have yeah, shit. I think, I think that 250 goes to five five to that's ten, it. maybe. That'll, 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 that'll pay for their Now pay you got to take ride. another that's check down there. That's what about the shit, black men? I'm on the next stage. I'm going to do something for the black men. Going to take 75,000 up there. Fill out the goddamn application. The fast one, motherfucker. Hey, you know what's crazy about that, though? People looking at that 250. Hold on, hold on. What do you say? People looking at that 250, but that's only because, like, I guess people I'm, I'm, in, in our culture, I'm a notable person, right? Yeah. But Jim Clyburn gave 1.7 million. Nobody knows the him. Same he day. doesn't have a breakfast club. I went before him. For I, real. I told Jim, I said, Jim, I'm going before you because you got that big ass motherfucking. But ain't he right. like a councilman or something? He a congressman. Uh, a congressman. Yeah, and he oh, that's nothing. Lit. Who's <laughs> money tax free? He should have been giving a million a year, Jim. But about he time been. you step up. He, he it shouldn't been. take Charlemagne bringing a check for you to want to do something. No, no, no. Rich Jim, Jim been doing stuff for the school, but his wife just died. His wife from Mount Corner. His wife died like four weeks ago. So they opening up a honors college in his wife's name right. and he cut, he gave them the 1.7 million I'm gonna million say dollars. this and nobody's told you this bro the way you talk about Monk's Corner make motherfuckers wanna go there even though we know the shit <laughs> little as fuck but when you talk about it it make motherfuckers like I done rolled through South Carolina and then you see the sign that Monk's says Corner, but it's not it it's, it's never close it's always like, shit like 29 miles shit. west right. or some shit like God, I would damn. go if it was on my it. way yeah. but I'm not going out my way to go to Monk's it's Corner it's like he turn it into the Magnolia of South Carolina <laughs> right. like, you just <laughs> know when you see it like they go to Magnolia they go to Monk's Corner you got Monk's like, Corner four stoplights in a trailer park in right. that bitch Monk's Corner booming right now we got a Google we got a Google headquarters down there motherfucker <laughs> of course. They, don't, they got a Google, Google building, building. there's not a Google no headquarters. headquarters stop lying on Google I promise Google you. did not go down there and open headquarters man, yes they, did, they got man. a building down there man. Google's got <laughs> acres man. by the whole <laughs> land for $30 Shulk, it's a Google building not the Google no, building I'm telling you they got a whole headquarters 
Orange Man. Man, we got That's an Auntie up. Ann's pretzels. <laughs> no, we ain't got one of those yet. He said, yeah, we ain't got one of we those, ain't got those no yet. <laughs> Y'all got Google and Nah. We got Chick-fil-A like three years ago. That's Chick-fil-A. Three, Domino's yeah, is three, delivering pizzas. That ain't shit down there. But to much is, who much is given, much is required. People gonna start leaning on y'all in a minute. Oh, it's too late, man. Yeah. Oh, they already are. Oh man, bro, we man, gave. Please. We just met Chico. Just donated ten thousand dollars to a HBCU, and For we real? don't even know what they did with the money. Which HBCU? Kentucky, Kentucky State. State. Bro, we was there, and the kids was like, "Man, we ain't eight. We ain't getting no homecoming." <laughs> so he was like, bro, we would get some money together. And they was like, bro, we need it right now. No homecoming? But they I mean, have they no home. They had a homecoming, you, but they you, didn't have no you food. Go to an HBCU, the Kentucky experience State. is different there. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Uh, the environment is not conducive to being able to give you anything beyond the minimum of what is required for you to be there. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's like when it's homecoming, you know, that's a, a time of abundance when you want to have a good time and all that and spend, you know, you got to save your money, spend your money, go to the parties and all that. So you got to really make a decision as to whether or not you're going to eat. Damn right. And when you got the food that's available to you, you know, that calf, and mother, them calf eggs make you shit two steps after you eat it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So if you want to have something good to kind of go with the ambiance of being in a homecoming environment and they didn't have that. And you can tell them, me going to HBCU, I knew exactly what they was feeling because yeah. man, but tough. I But I, I like to tell the kids, man, even though you go to an HBCU, you can go get food stamp. Yeah, I got food stamps when you I was in college. You get food stamps in college? Yeah. Hell yeah, boy. I ain't go to college. Oh, my God. I remember when they what? first hit. Boy, I, when they first hit, I was walking through the grocery store. Let me tell you like, Staying alive. I was just getting <laughs> anything. <laughs> Howdy, what do you got? What, what, what kind of application do you what fill out? No, it's just a regular application. Once let you let them know that you don't have no income and that it's, you in school, you, they'll give you some food stamps. No, stamp. don't tell them you in school. No, don't. Tell them motherfuckers <laughs> you ain't got nowhere to go. And they gonna be like, what's his address? That's just my mailing address. And you literally, you not lying. You definitely telling the truth. Bro, you see how everybody got quiet because they knew you knew exactly what you was talking about. <laughs> listen, <Bro. laughs> you have to, that's exactly how you get food stamps. When you go in there, be like, you apply, be like, listen, I got my mailing address. That's where my mail come from. And at that time, I was dead serious. I was sleeping over this girl house, over that home. It's a negative house, connotation that comes house. with listen, food stamps, bro. I don't know why. And then they food ask food you, do you have a job? They ask you, do you have a job? Like, nah. Then I'm like, all right, well, look, because you need a mailing address for the food. Ooh, stamp the cut. Man, shot up a light, but you get 218 every month. Do you know my ass? <laughs> <laughs> we got steak. We got crab legs. That's right. What? Why, why the fuck do we buy crab legs with food stamps? Because that's the first thing a nigga wants. They don't tax the food when you use Man. food stamps. Oh, if it's a dollar shit. 25, it's a dollar 25. There's no tax on the food when you use food stamps. For four yeah. years. The well, that's government why you stretch the, 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 the money stretch so much longer because you don't have to get no tax on it. That's why you 50 cent on a dollar type Wait a minute. Does this yeah, just turn into a financial podcast? Oh, yeah. This no. shit. This shit wow. I used to love when I used to sell crack and they used to come through with food stamps. EBT fucked the game up. You when sell they fuck- crack, nigga? Yeah. I just can't see you selling crack. You're such a nice person. You would, like, front the crack. Nah, I was a, I was a, I was How a hand to hand guy. He was just like, <laughs> just get pay me back when you can. So I was hand to hand. You feel good? You done gave two hundred fifty thousand dollars and then admitted to being a crack dealer. They might run I your back. Wait, 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 wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! How did you look as a crack dealer? Like, yeah, how would you do a, a transaction right now? If I was a crackhead, he hey, did hey. have an afro. I did. He had I did. one of them running back afros. <laughs> <laughs> That was it? That's it. Yeah, you wouldn't have made it that long. I I didn't. I had had a short run, about eight, nine months, ten months. Oh, yeah, yeah. What was your most balling shit you did as a crack dealer? The dumbest shit I did, because I used to sell quarter spoons. Quarter spoons are seven grams, you know what I'm saying? So you're supposed to spend $250 for seven grams, and you're supposed to be able to cut it up in the 20s and at least double your money, 500 Yeah. So the most money I had at one time was like $1,000, right? Back then, I thought I was... Balling. Shit, you 97, was. 98. That's a lot of money, that 97. Is this, this you could have bought a Dell. <laughs> <laughs> you remember when motherfuckers was ordering Dells, they were delivering them to the crib? <laughs> <laughs> this girl I was dating at the time, uh, I took her to the mall, and it was her and her friend, and I, everything I bought her, I would buy her friend. Did you fuck her friend eventually? No. You were not well, a good I fucked drug up my dealer. money. You were supposed to fuck nah. both of them. No. And 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 I, I, I and I and, 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 and hindsight it wasn't a lot of money. It's nine yeah. months to sell it dope. He was a trick. <laughs> <laughs> I, I bought a bitch some Nike. I bought a bitch a uh, Adele. I made a thousand dollars and spent it all on another. It was dumb. You said I made a thousand dollars, spent seven fifty on my girl and her home girl. That's it. That's and, and, had a, and had enough to re up. That's what's up, bro. Yep. And then my dumb ass took a consignment of a half ounce. Damn. And it was some bullshit because it was you cooked mostly nigga with isotonin. Isotonin. Yep. And I bro. couldn't sell it. 
And after that, I was like, you know what? This, this shit ain't for me. Ooh, that, well, that, one, that, that one time we had to stay down and take you out. that shit ain't See? for me. He was like, I can't do this shit. <laughs> <laughs> nigga done tricked me That's when you go to Went over there And slapped the dog Shit out that nigga ass. Nah, You can't do that At Monk's Corner Them dope fiends Strong down there You already know He in the real country <laughs> Nah but that see, wasn't even The dog That was the nigga That in front of me The shit Yeah he bought it For somebody yeah. Oh well if he Whoever he was selling it to He wasn't gonna be able To get that off Them dope fiends Was coming to see And then he was on my ass About his money Like Bro, he you ever have a nigga Front you some dope And then call you The same day for the money no, <laughs> hey, give me a couple of days. Right. Shit, you, you, you did anything yet? I had to tell nigga one time like, he called me like literally like a couple hours. I was like, bro, you know you can come back and get this shit, right? <laughs> like, oh, you on bougie like, crack I ain't even told nobody. I had it. <laughs> nigga, I'm still out eating. Nigga, what the fuck? You done put that shit in my mailbox? Go get that. Get that out my mailbox. Somebody go steal that. You bougie drug. You're like, man, come get your shit. You, you can't wait to say that oh goddamn God. dope. When the last time you sold your last your last little bit of dope? D? Yeah, it was like 2013. Yeah, I said it had to be yeah, recent. I remember that. No, I've never was, sold that's crack, not recent. Man, that's old. Weed, that is recent. 2013? Six years? Yeah. Before the vine. Like literally like right before the vine. Oh, gotcha. I was got still you, popping you. pills and everything. For real? What? <laughs> Lock job. I be one of them niggas. They be like, he on it again. You know it. <laughs> <laughs> so what made you stop? Vine, vine didn't make you stop, did it? Yes, it did. Bro. Really? I had to be focused, bro. I remember one time I, when, I, when I was doing the Vine videos, I fucked around and had to no pop the molly. Nigga, I probably recorded like 200 videos. I bet your original Vine Jaw was locking. Fire. What? Jaw was locking? I was like, yeah, but you already know what time it is. We out here in the wood. That Sammy Davis Jr. job. Nigga, I'm like, yeah, we're in the fuck. Sammy Davis Jr. Nigga, it's like 6 o'clock in the morning. I'm like, nigga, it's 6 o'clock in the morning. We're in the wood. Hey, he is not lying. He used to be up every morning smoking the blunt on Instagram. You go in there and see that shit. I'm asking my mom if she wants something from McDonald's. Man, you want some from McDonald's? <laughs> <laughs> we in the motherfucking hood. It's seven o'clock in the morning. That probably what got your vine popping though. No, it was after that because I seen that. I had to delete a couple of them videos. It was two hundred. Yeah, it was fine. It was six seconds. So one of them six seconds over. Like, all right, let me post that. Post that. Stay in the motherfucking hood. All right, let me post that. Come on, you want some from McDonald's? We in the motherfucking. Yeah, I gotta do when, that one quicker. When did you stop selling low? I ain't never sell crack. I was weak. Man, a so little weed. Bit. just a little bit, just a little, just enough weed where I can smoke for free. Yeah, there was no profits made. None. Ah, nah. I, uh, yeah, I know. Nah. What's the most you ever no, had at one time? The I most was... I ever, I had met this old school nigga. And he gave me like three pounds in a frosted flake box, and he was just like, "Man, you just have it," because he was about to go to jail. Yeah. So you know, you had to get rid of it. So he got, he brought the frosted flakes box with about three pounds, and I split it with my partner, and that was it. That was my last go round. That was old four. Yeah. That was in the bubble Chevy then. I had, a, I had I half a that. pound of weed. That was the biggest. That was the biggest I ever got. Was it half? A half? A yeah, cause nah. when I, I started from a three five though. See niggas, I had to work from a three five to a half a pound. God damn! To all the yeah. people who don't know what niggas that means, that, that means he took a uh, just a small bag, <laughs> like a personal bag, and I'm started like, his I'm empire. Like, how did you do that? Like he's, he started his empire with well, forty four dollars. Right? One blunt, one blunt, <laughs> one blunt that half a pound is he sold it's one and he smoked that's one. A, that's a mixtape. Hey, that's why I right tell nigga. I said, but you can't you, you blunt to a bag. You can't tell me about staying down. But that's why we say you took your first fuck up. You like, oh, I'm done. He sold you the bad dope. That was the first fuck up. But it was a few things. It was that And then somebody stole The same bad dope I had it's, Somebody stole it's, it It's discreet You, you know what I'm saying back, back. Hey, I ain't you need it, it. Hey, see, was, look, see look I was over it Now they asked it, Now the crack cake Like And you like Man I'm done with that shit <laughs> <laughs> they like, damn, nigga, just started. Nigga, like, they need you. <laughs> the half of a, you in Atlanta was that rough. I had, I had a partner got robbed right. in Atlanta one time. Dead beat you drunk. You walked out on your car. Kids. I had a partner got robbed in it. Atlanta was rough. I had a partner got robbed in Atlanta. Nigga drove to Atlanta for a half a pound of weed and got robbed at whatever project he went to go I buy from. Yeah. And yep. nigga. Made him come all the way down here too. That's how yes. petty he is. But like, we finna rob the nigga for 50. Hey, man, I'm telling you, if you ever buy drugs in Atlanta and that nigga don't have a backpack, don't do it. Why you say that? It's something about the niggas with the backpacks that just, you could trust them. It's something about them. It's like they, they went to college or something. They just, if a nigga show up and he got your pack in a backpack, you say. Are they more professional? I think so. Because it's like they, an in and out I just out feel thing. like they got more to lose. It's like the nigga try. Yeah, it's something about that. It's like an in and out. He Because he, he got it in the bag and he like, you, 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 you ready? Uh, <laughs> in and out. Show but, yeah, he pull up no. in his baby mama car with the backpack. Safe. <laughs> Niggas still hand to hand in Atlanta. Yeah, what? Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. He yeah. Pull up who? Nigga ain't even go to no house. Who? Yeah. 
You better meet me at the goddamn CVS. For right quick. Damn. Quick. Go in that bitch and buy some night quill and then and that walk shit past right me there and by the goddamn that shit right there by the Oreos. <laughs> <laughs> you ever seen just a shit? random nigga in CVS? <laughs> Making a drug yeah. <laughs> Carlos, you trying to get everybody to move to Atlanta too, man. Everybody that I talked to that moved to Atlanta was like, man, Carlos Miller told me to move here. That's because Atlanta, Atlanta probably one of the only real- cities where it's like, if you a nigga and you trying, bro, the city will recognize your efforts. Yeah, we recognize it don't matter most- what kind of nigga you are, bro. You could be a crack dealer as long as you got ambition. They respect the hustle. You could you could flip your crack empire to selling used cars or something. Yeah, it is an opportunity for your ass in Atlanta, man. Why I'm you telling think that people? is in Atlanta specifically? Because the oh, whole it's real niggas, man. It's we, real. It's, it's, you know what I'm saying? Southern hospitality. If you're a real nigga, we appreciate that. You I'm gonna tell you what the real is. Go get some collard green, nigga. We don't know you. You're hungry. You look hungry. Eat, fuck, nigga. Atlanta is a city full of pride. <laughs> man. We, Atlanta takes pride. <laughs> Atlanta takes pride in, in in seeing everybody do good. Right, like it's, it's for the city. Like you, like you come. Thank to you, Lowe's, for talking about Atlanta, my city like that. That's real. I've been. Why, in why you look so disgusted, no, Chico? Because no. my city it's used not to be way. like that. You know DC, I mean? DC, but chocolate now they done gentrified the shit out. My, it ain't chocolate city no more. It's white chocolate chip city. Lord now. have it's, mercy. Yeah, it's ridiculous. <laughs> like, and then you know, coming from a city like DC, like. Like that's the reason why I have we all love Marion Barry so much like cause he was he did what he was supposed to do for the people of the city when it was an mm-hmm. all black city mm-hmm. like we went from it's so crazy how gentrification worked cause you know we lived in the community you describe Marion Barry for those people who don't know Marion Barry was the mayor of Washington D.C. legendary from like 1979 until he went to jail the first time then came home from jail and got elected again and he went to most, jail for he went to jail cause he got caught smoking, a, smoking crack smoking crack and fucking a hooker right and yeah fucking with the hooker but <laughs> I don't see I don't see the problem, no, Legend, but that's the thing. That, that's the mo- that makes him. I don't see the problem. The thing. I don't that see the problem makes him the, not only is to me he's the most legendary politician, but yeah. that also makes him the most legendary crackhead. Because you yeah. know a bunch of crackheads, <laughs> but one none of them mayor. No, none no, of them he not none. He, he might be top five. I, I can't say he the most legendary. Man, he was Who's the, the most legendary crackhead? I'm a, this is me personally speaking, and I'm, 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 I don't want. I'm not disrespecting the man because I love this man, DMX, bro. Because nah. they said that whole man, time. Man. No man, they said that whole time DMX was putting out them platinum albums. He was on they said he was on crack. it the whole time. Yeah, but wait, 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 DMX, wait, though. Tell him about Man Barry, though. The crackhead, he had a whole fucking... He was the man, bro. He had to do budgets. He had to fix right. the pot. Oh, he, was on crack to, he was on crack, oh, Give me a pen. We need to write this top five crackhead list down. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Tell him, no, bro. Barry, number one. We, I mean, but that's I, the thing. Well, we didn't even yeah. look at him like that because of the things that he did for the city. Like, yeah. he made it possible for... for In a city when D.C. had the highest murder rate, the highest recidivism rate, yeah. you know what I mean? The lowest educational rates. So he was a functioning know, crackhead. I mean, he was... Oh. the the greatest. Oh, the highest. He Mary was Barry. the greatest. Like, and, and it's like he went to jail for that and then came home and then reelected, got reelected by the people of DC because we After he got after caught he on got video caught, smoking on video. crack. They, they, they and they when he got caught, Charlemagne, guess what his response was bitch, when he got caught? Oh, yeah, it was All he said was, yeah. the bitch set, set me up. Yeah. Realest nigga That's out. Real. He didn't explain shit. Damn. He didn't Realest explain shit. Ever. He never denied <laughs> smoking crack. <laughs> he never said he wasn't on drugs. He was just like, the bitch set me up. And that was it. Straight up. The man did exactly what every real nigga do when he get out of work. Want to get high and get some pussy? Yeah, that's pussy. it. Not crack though. I mean, I mean don't you matter. don't know. You might. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's Burn fascinating was such a because, cold mayor. like, you, you know, we Jeez, always you we always looked at people who had like serious drug addictions, but they've found a way to get money, right? And right. we're like, holy shit! Imagine you could apply that work ethic. Because you got to think about mentality. Mary Berry did it. Mary did it. Mary but Mary you got to think about the whole fucking city the mentality. With, like, a crack say addiction. if you smoke yeah. crack, you're not successful. And that's but my boy Barry. It's like I smoke crack and I'm the mayor. Hey, the mayor. And, and he's up and more the hours is, so he can when, do more when work. That's real. Video, when that's, you watch that's the video, Adderall. he really knew how to play it. He, was he, he ain't really know how to hit it the way she was trying to get him to hit it in the video. That wasn't even his style. So he might have just started smoking crack. He, he not the way that she was smoking it. Whatever yeah. I mean, she was doing it, he wasn't with that. But she whatever he was doing, way. he was. I mean, you could catch Marion Burr. You might get on the metro bus and see Marion Burr in the back of the bus what talking about five that? old niggas. This was what like 90, 91 something right, like that. So, so you know what he might have been a, he might have been a coke guy yeah right. you know what I'm saying so, yes. and that shit might have just yeah. graduated around early 90s 
nineties. A lot of people was coke guys. Right. A lot of people doing coke back then were also smoking crack. crack. Like now. people didn't realize it. Right. Well, no, the crack, yeah. uh, the crack evolved from the coke. You know, black people yeah. love to fry shit. Right. So we started frying that. the cocaine. Yeah. Nigga yeah. just yeah. said crack ain't nothing but fried cocaine. My mind is blown. That's really what it is. That's all it is. We love to fry shit. Crack is fried cocaine. That's all it is. And it's like when you look at what the what happened in my city for all of these years, it had all these negative, you know, stigmas attached to it. And in 10 years, they came and raised the property value to where it's one of the highest property values in the country, mm -hmm. raised the education system in 10 years. So it's like, how can we have something for 50, 60 years yeah. and not be able to rectify and make it better for everybody? And then the, the others come in and get it for 10 and make everything better. It's like it just is proof that we are at a disadvantage as a people to be able to really make changes because all the money, all the crack money and all of that that came through the city. Mm -hmm. We don't own none of them buildings. All them buildings that that go for millions of dollars now that was eighty eight, ninety thousand dollars in nineteen eighty eight, eighty nine. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody bought them. I mean, black infrastructure is important. That's why I think Atlanta thrives because y'all always got a black man. Right. You know what I'm saying? We try, and, and we try, and we try to keep legal. that shit going on. And they made guns legal. Uh, well, they, they made weed a little bit legal. You gotta have uh, 27 grams. It's but a ticket. About in it's a ticket. But I mean, but you it's ain't going to jail in DC. When I grew no, up, yeah. if you got caught with a hammer, got caught with a pistol, they give you 10 years for the gun, five per yeah. bullet. Every bullet, yeah. You know what I mean? And now you can legally own a pistol in the city because yeah. the demographic has changed to where we don't care that these people are able to carry firearms. Uh -huh. We just don't want you niggas to have them. Well, we gotta protect our people from them niggas. That's all. Right. That's what the what? white people thinking. White people like make oh, sure I that you were saying that. I was no, like, what? <laughs> I ain't making that much money. You really did right. give a no. quarter million dollars away. <laughs> well, no, the white people were thinking that. The white people were like, let's make sure that our people are armed. Right. So in case that the, the the black people get into an uproar, because it's always gonna be like that. That's what I think America yeah. don't understand. It's gonna be it's some gonna, type of rebellion. It's be black and right. Yeah. Hell yeah! yeah. And you were how old when Barry and Barry won the second time? Uh, I was like uh, ten, eleven so when he came out. Okay, I always thought this was so fascinating. Is that like someone lost to him? Yeah, a lot of people like Sharon Pratt Kelly lost to him. But how great! Like this guy he was with a hooker he, smoking crack. And he right, know the streets. He, he, he know the language. He, he know how to talk people. to the people. This was DC, man. He yes. did, but like, it's not because of that. Dude, it's because you, of what Always he did. It's you. because of what he did for the people. Yeah. Right, love, bro. Yeah. 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 It's because of what he did for the city. Like he created the summer job program. He created all of these different government jobs for black people to get work and all of that. And yeah. you know what I mean? That's why he's always and forever will be the mayor of DC. Lifetime mayor. He our president. The uh, only thing I, I regret, I hope that I hate that I wasn't really old enough to really grasp what was going on at that point, bro. Yeah. Just to see a crackhead run an entire city and not be over under budget and just like put those programs in place because you know he showed up at some of them places had like we about to get these kids some jobs and just walk <laughs> off right and did it you know what I mean so it's like to hear the things that they say about Atlanta is 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 amazing to me because we used to have a city that was I used to have a city that was like that that was supportive and that was driven by black economy man and it's, it's, it's sad to you know go back home and not recognize the city that but I grew up especially when they still call it a chocolate times, city like, like I feel like it's not just uh, you know white or black cities but there's like a lot of times uh, when someone is successful from uh, a smaller city and then they get like this international success or national success oftentimes the people from home Try to bring them down. Always. You know what I mean? Like, you see that. Yeah, I catch a lot of that because it don't matter what I'm on. People think I'm supposed to just, like, yell out Mississippi. I'm like, it doesn't <laughs> have shit to do with what I'm doing. Right, right. So they, all, But it's just that a lot of people feel like they're not going to get, you know, they want the recognition. They haven't had that chance to be seen on so the broad scale. So they're living vicariously through you. So yeah, you, you got to make sure you represent every chance you get. And yeah, you got to understand. Duval does that well, though. Duval's all, I mean, look at his name. Duval does but it great. Like, but you also got to understand that all of those people know you from the beginning. Right, and they, so they think you're going to don't feel like you should be in the spot you should be right. in. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. Oh, they're resentful. Yeah, Absolutely. Kinda. But you're saying in Atlanta that doesn't happen. You're saying Atlanta is supportive when it's on. Exactly. Is that why you see it's fifty? It's fifty top Atlanta rappers because they all support each other. <laughs> they all you. record at the same studio. They all go past each other. Blunts at Magic City, and there's never no you know no too issue. Too many people like to that. hate on. Too many. In Mississippi, it would be David Banner, Crit. Big Crit, and Carlos. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I can hate on them three. Oprah's I got plenty from of time to Oprah three. from Mississippi. You never hear her say nothing about wow, it. Oh, I didn't That's know that. True. Oprah is from Kosciuszko. I thought she was from Baltimore. She is from Mississippi, baby. For real? Did she, did she actually live there? Man, oh. Morgan Freeman's from Mississippi. Um, John Grisham. 
Yeah. He's from my hometown. You know, Time yeah, to Kill, the big horse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, went to high, I went to elementary school with his son. Really? Yeah. John Grisham used to come to my school all the time. The writer, the author. Yeah. He used to have baseball games at his house. He had a baseball field in his house. Oh, his son, when problem. we were 9 and 10, we playing Dizzy D baseball. Oh, he had a baseball field put in his front yard. They used to have baseball practice over there. John Grisham was the coolest white man in the world, bro. He owns the whole side of the highway, bro, in Oxford. He got, his house is the whole side of the highway. That shit probably cost $1,000. Huh? That shit probably cost $1,000. disrespectful to Back then. No, for real, he owned his shit. Fuck that. Bro, no. He disrespected the shit out of my man just now. No, man, he owned the whole side of the highway. That shit probably cost $1,000. How old that man is? And then to think that you had that and you could have bought the side of the highway, but you spent it on a bitch and her friend. Right. That's fucked up, Charlamagne. <laughs> shout out to Mississippi, though. We don't get enough love, bro. They had to cut back on the budget. They don't even cut the grass on the highway no more. That shit like a oh, jungle. Fuck. For real? Yeah. We got to uh, do some shit down there, Charlamagne. What you want to do? I'm with it. I don't know, bro. Is it like, because you know you know how it is in the South and, you know, small town. It's got that small town mentality. We can't really do shit but like a barbecue or something. But you know how far that go? Yeah. I did a fish fry over the summer because I do my book bag giveaway in Mons Corn every year. But this time I, I added a fish fry element to it that shit was jumping in the rain yeah exactly yeah man people you, you be, you'll be surprised how fucked up people are right you know cause growing up when you grow up in that environment you don't really look at it like that cause all of y'all cause everything's the same everything the same yeah. all of y'all you know doing without all right. of y'all yeah. poor but when you and everybody living pretty much the yeah, same man, we yeah man we all smoking the same weed we sleeping with the same women exactly. we drinking yeah. the same corn liquor but when you step outside of it and you look at it from the outside looking in you like shit let me ask you a question Shorts. like yeah. how does it make you feel growing up in the environment that you grow up in when you go into these communities if you do and see the type of you know way that these people are living in the type of conditions does it make you feel like you have any responsibility to help or does it make you feel like man I'm glad I ain't well, gonna get the fuck that. away from here <laughs> now, you know what's weird <laughs> is I kind of grew up in between both in, in between two worlds like I was incredibly well off and I didn't need anything incredibly well off it was, it well was off. awesome like I I, I, I never <laughs> This shit was amazing. Nah, like, dude, it was amazing. It was amazing, right? Summer you're camps, never going to say, like, I'm shit. struggling. What I'm saying is, like, I also had, I'm also, I grew up in Manhattan, right? So I had friends whose parents, like, ran AT&T. That's different money. Yeah. So, like, when I'm around them, they think I'm poor. Mm. But then I'd be around friends that grew up in the projects, mm. and they think I'm um, as rich as rich it gets. As it gets right. So so I realized early how relative shit was. Mm -hmm. But I never need, I was never like needing for anything, so I knew how lucky, but at the same time, I knew how high it could go and how low it could go. Yeah, it just proves how success is is, is uh, subjective. Yes. You know what I mean? Success is very subjective because you have somebody who, you know, looks at what you have going on and mm -hmm. said that is the bar when the person that you're looking at has a whole nother spectrum. You, you were saying this yeah. earlier, before we start recording, it, I thought it was an interesting thing because you have a little bit different philosophy on, on dreaming mm -hmm. than most. You know, a lot of people go, just dream the biggest possible dream you can dream. Mm -hmm. And you say, don't, do that because you could put a limit on how far it could go? Yeah, you put a limit. In my opinion, you limit the ability that you can get out here and really see how much you can manifest by Because you didn't think that this, what's the success I you guys never, had. I would have never said what the things that we've been able to do. If somebody would have asked me after, you know, my first six months of doing stand-up comedy, hey, man, if you can say what your career would look like. First of all, you're basing it off the success that you're seeing. Right. So yeah. you're only going to be able to base it off what you, oh, well, I want to be the next whoever. I want my career to look like this. Not even knowing that there's a whole nother lane that you can create that has probably never been done before that's never been done before that's just specifically for you. So if you don't limit yourself to what people say success is supposed to be, you'll be able to manifest a whole different type of success that you didn't even know was possible. But don't you have to have some type of bar though? Yeah, I mean, you, but to me, the bar is is just knowing that you're doing something that you love and being consistent in it, mm -hmm. getting up and doing it every day. I, got, I started working when I was nine years old at the barbershop. And once I figured out how to make money, I would do my homework in school just so I can go to the barbershop during the week. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because I enjoy the hustle of it. I enjoy being able to get up and go out and get something for myself. So as long as you have, in my opinion, as long as you have that type 
type of drive and consistency to do what it is that every opportunity that you get, like you say, every opportunity don't always come with a check attached to mm-hmm. it. So if you just had a drive to get up and be the best version of yourself that you can be, all the things that's going to come from you doing that are going to be specific and unique to you. Me and this dude and sat and had conversations, not necessarily about what we were going to do, but just talking about all of the different things that we have done and how crazy it is and how amazing it is. And we see the success, like you done been around us for a long time. Mm-hmm. Like even I'm sure you seeing us as being people that can do what we did. I'm sure you looking like, man, these niggas is doing it. No, I think y'all doing, I don't even think y'all scratch the surface no, of where y'all going. Still. It is so crazy. I've always thought that y'all was thought. What's happening though. But I mean, <laughs> I, I, I've been such a huge fan of you guys for a while. I think like every once in a while, just randomly text Carlos would be like, bro, seeing what's going on is just fucking nuts. Cause I'm on Instagram. So I'm just, I'm seeing you guys go from like clubs to like theaters to these like massive fucking theaters. And then you were saying you guys just did the Apollo here in New York twice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Two so, sold out shows. Now this I mean, is interesting to me because like back in the day, the idea would be here are these three Southern guys. They're going to be a Southern act. We'll tour them around the South. And now with the internet and you guys have this massive success, you come up to New York and then you sell out two shows at the Apollo. At the Apollo Theater. Yeah. And that's because funny is funny. You know what I'm saying? Are you surprised like by that? Are you like, yo, these guys yeah, didn't even because, get us? Like, see, I always look at, I look at everything as a comedian first. Like, right. I feel like I got two careers. Like, my stand-up comedy career, it doesn't mix with my entertainer career. Right. Like, I <laughs> moonlight as a comedian at this point. Yeah, yeah. Because everybody take New York for a comedian? Yeah, this is where you, Mecca. this is yeah. like, this is like the final level. Yeah, yeah. Like, you come to New York to make sure everything works, yeah. like your timing is right. So it's like, to come here and be embraced yeah. as a comedic star yeah. is fucking crazy. See, I think man. the South is tougher. And the reason I think the South is tougher is because you can go down South and you can be the funniest motherfucker everywhere else. But then people down South, you're looking at you like, I don't get none of this shit he talking about. You know what I'm saying? And they'll oh, run you off the that thing. About think about ch- what that shit they used to do in Atlanta, the chocolate... Tuesdays, not chocolate. Maybe that's LA. Tripping on Tuesdays. Tripping on Tuesdays. No, that's LA. But see, this well, is the thing, Atlanta, this is the thing yeah. about doing comedy in the South. This is the one thing people don't understand. It's like, you can have the best set ever. You can have the funniest material ever. But if you don't have that segment in your show to let people know, hey, I'm standing right here in front yeah, of you. Yeah, yeah, I see yeah, you just yeah, like yeah. you see me. This yeah. is off the script. This is off the cuff. Yeah. This is organic. I can do that also. If you don't give them that, they don't give a fuck what you do. Yeah, mm-hmm. fuck like you gotta, You have to acknowledge yeah, the crowd yeah, yeah. in the you South. Like, you just trying to sell me right. something. Yeah. Yeah. You can't they just walk out funny. and hit your script. You they gotta know it's real. Yeah. They want to know you can do it organically exactly. and then, okay, you can do your jokes. And then you can do your jokes. Is, is that is that tricky for you guys when you guys do your stand-up specific dates? No, nope, because like, I'm not one of those comedians that's like die hard by the material. I'm not one of those yeah. ones like, oh, I didn't get to do my octopus joke. I give a fuck <laughs> about that. You know, like New York comics, they they are so like, ah, I didn't get to do my one. Mm-hmm. Like, who cares? Who cares? Right. And Question. it's not like it's not even about jokes with me. It's like, nigga, what can you do to entertain these people? Right. Can you give them a show? Right. Fuck the jokes. Fuck the set. What's your show look like? But that's where y'all best shit come from. Even when I, I've seen Chico in Philly and he start fucking with Gilly the Kid. Oh and that shit will go viral. I see. But see, you got to keep in mind, all of that type of shit, that's from coming to us being fans, bro. Like, me and Chico, after the show, people think we got all these hoes and shit. Man, we be kicking it, smoking a blunt, watching Wallow and Gilly the Kid. Like, we we still fans of motherfuckers. And you, you should always keep that energy. Right. Like, I, I, I approach it the same way. I'm always a fan of the culture at the end of the exactly. day. Exactly. Is it weird when, when you see the people that you idolize, mm-hmm. like, in your DMs? Yes. Or tell, bro, every time like, Deion Sanders call Yo, me, I fucking so drop my phone. Bro. Oh, shit, it's Deion. <laughs> <laughs> when was it? Well, it was, this is a month ago? Yeah. It was a, I think I'm just scrolling randomly on YouTube because you guys, your stuff populates my YouTube feed all right. the time. You know how, like, YouTube kind of, like, chooses yeah, the yeah, shit exactly. you like, right? And I see full... Dallas shows it. Was yeah. it, Dallas? it was like full Dallas show. You guys did like the actual show. You did kind of like doc with it. And then it was like featuring Deion Sanders. And I thought like he's going to bring you up or something like that. Or he just showed up. I'm like, how the fuck did they get Deion here? This motherfucker's on stage with them. Oh, Deion be in the hood with it now. That's Bro. what I'm saying. For real. Yeah. Dude, it's so how does crazy. his hair look? Does it look real legit? Yeah. yeah. It's legit. Really? Man, this is wild to me because it's like we had the meeting last year with fucking Revolt, right? Yeah. And we sitting there with Puff. 
And he's talking about his favorite moments from 85. This is Yo, shit we bro. never Just thought he would see. Like, right. man, she was crazy. <laughs> when you was talking about your, uh, your slow cousin work at McDonald's. Chico, you losing weight, man. Yeah, What's up, look? Bro, I'm fucking with you, man. You looking good. Like that, and he's hitting you with details. Like, 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 did he tell you that you lost weight? Like, hey, you look, you look, you losing hey, weight. Let me pour you another drink. Freaky shit, man. Some man got niggas tied up in his basement. I know. Did he like? Did he like? Chico, you lose the weight. You pour you another drink, man. Man, man, got a whole gimp. Man, that shit terrified me back in the day. Bro, you gonna fuck the Rego money up? (laughs) He gonna fuck up the Rego money. Nah, I fuck with it. Did he hilarious, man? Listen, (laughs) what did Dion call you and say, (laughs) bro? I didn't want to say funny after that segue. I said hilarious. Bro. No, because like he'll he'll call me randomly and just be talking shit, and I'm like, man, I'm such a big fan. He'd be like, yeah, fuck all that. But did you see when wheelchair man jumped up out the wheelchair? Yeah. <laughs> like I, when we did the BT cipher, I looked at my at the comments on that you posted, yeah. and Bun B was like, man, Chico went crazy. Now I almost pissed on myself because it's like I love UGK. Like Hell that was one yeah. of the groups that I grew up. Even you know man. DC was so unique because we had our own music with the Go Go, but we were heavily influenced by Southern music, you know what I mean? And Bun B and Pimp C was like, I idolized them growing up. It was one of the few rap groups that I actually believed. You, you know got a saying? Pimp C tone. I mean, but you got to play Pimp C in the movie, bro. You know what I mean? It was, it was, it was one, he was just one of them people that I just looked up to. And to see that and to see that acknowledgement is just like, wow. Like, Twister is another yeah. rapper. Like, I used to. Be, get on punishment my uncles would make me learn twister verses and shit like nigga know this by the time I get back home Why bro, was that I, met one of my, oh, I met one of my OG OGs bro who Tone Loke Tone Wild Yo. Thing wow. yeah man. Funky, Funky Cole Medina. Medina. God damn I was like nigga Tone Loke he I came met to the Freddy Krueger bro Robert, Robert England the real Freddy Krueger I know Freddy Krueger yeah. the real and Freddy Krueger we get excited Kruger. about bro, the when I was at the airport I was too. like nobody knew who he was I was like just some random nigga. I was like, nigga, that's Freddy Krueger. He's like, man, bro, you remember tripping? We, remember we I'm like, nigga, that's him. Mall. And I was like, watch this. And I was like, bro, can I take a picture? And he was like, hell yeah. He was like, would you please just like do the Freddy Krueger voice? He's like, nah, I don't want to do it. <laughs> and then, and then, the lady, then this lady was like, can you hurry up so we can get a picture? And he snapped and turned into Freddy Krueger. He's like, wait a minute, bitch. I was like, yes, yes, yes. That was the coldest shit, bro. Yeah. Like, I, we, I love me, motherfuckers, man. And, and we be excited. Well, who was that we seen coming out the mall that day? Oh, the old school, um, the old school black dude, Howard, Howard Hewitt, Hewitt, bro. Hewitt. Howard Hewitt. He was just outside, outside just on the phone. Where at? Like, oh, nigga, I don't even remember where we was at. Yeah, we was Charlotte somewhere, was somewhere like crazy. And he was just sitting outside the mall. Now, I met Project Patton at in Project the airport. Patton. Man. Project Patton. Man, I had to FaceTime this motherfucker. I'm in the airport. I'm like, man, fuck that. I'm bro, Project Pat don't me. have a bigger fan than me. Project Pat go hard. We was just talking about Project Pat last week because uh, didn't some guy call somebody a scallywag? Bro, please bring Project oh, Pat to the, the Breakfast shows? Club. I don't give a shit that he don't have nothing to promote, bro. Nah. We just need that for the That's, internet. It, it, Project Pat is a whole legend. That's why yeah. I like when I look at these motherfuckers now and they act like the the, the, the artists now are, are they ain't shit. Like, they used to look at Pat the same the way same back way. in the day, but Pat was going platinum. Pat bro. was spitting, And had a too. fan base. Hell Pat yeah. There's still not a lot of thing. rappers that can rap better than Juvenile. Come on, man. Juvenile, one of the Come coolest on, motherfuckers to ever pick up a microphone. I want Juvenile to do CIAA next year. Come on, man. Then she got mad, call me bitches and motherfuckers. I waited till she got by the door, reached back and snuck her. She did like bro. any bitch would have did and, and got, got the, the law, law for me. me. Talking about going press charge and get up off of me. I told her when I get out of jail, I'm going to beat you off of I'm gonna beat you awfully. Oh, that man. was fucked up. That was before the Me Too times yeah. up. Open the fire at your call back in the day. Listen, that was they back in the day. Hope that they don't get to coming back with the lyrics like I'm a Tank fan. That nigga used to go hard and hard. <laughs> what Tank used to say? Man, listen, you don't remember? Maybe I deserved that at nigga the said end? to grab your throat. Yeah, I mean, until you let me know. Yeah, listen that, to the, the end. title of that song is wild. Then that nigga Maybe said I to deserve. Grab my coat and chase you down the street, nigga. That nigga was going crazy. <laughs> what did that bitch do, Tank? You got to do a, a unsung on white. You wrote that song. What did she do to make you grab your coat? Because he knew he wasn't coming back in the house. Because usually if you're chasing somebody, you don't think to grab your coat. You're like, nah, I'm not stopping. I'm going to catch this I bitch. might be out Let here me, for a I while. Might be right. out here hey, for a while. you know why? You, what you, what Chico said some real shit, but you know why the Me Too Times Up movement or none of that shit will ever affect hip hop? Because everybody loved a problematic hip hop song at some mm-hmm. point in their motherfucking life. Chris Rock made the joke about that shit. You remember that? He was uh-uh. talking about how women love the most misogynistic 
lyrics. Yeah, yeah, it yeah, could yeah. be a song uh-huh. called Slap It With The Dick. Slap It oh, With The yeah, Dick. Oh, yeah, yeah, I do remember that. Hit Slap that bitch with a bat. I'm like, you going to support <laughs> yes, that? Man. ain't talking about me. Yes. yes. At some point, you sang along the Snoop Dogg ain't no fun if the homies can't have none. Oh, you bitches ain't that. shit but hoes and tricks. Yeah. I'm talking about women yeah, at some oh, point course. sang along and to Nate that Dogg shit. on the beginning of that song was so disrespectful. And if you can't fuck that day, baby, <laughs> just, just lay back and open your mouth. <laughs> Cause, Cause I, I have never, never met a girl. <laughs> and then my nigga Corrupt come right behind him with some yeah. hard ass shit. Hard ass shit. That I shit was so hard. If Corrupt get the fuck no. about a bitch, I, I never be broke. broke. I, I never have no motherfucking end of the smoke. I get low and loony. <laughs> bitch, you can't, can't do me. Do we, we look like BBD. You hoochie groupies. groupies. I got no love for hoes. Oh, that's, that's something that I learned, learned in the past. So how the fuck am I supposed to, to pay this hoe? Just to lay this hoe. I know the pussy is mine, so I'ma fuck a couple more times. And then I'm through with it. There's nothing else to do with it. Pass it to the homie, now you hit it. Cause it ain't nothing but a bitch to me. And y'all know that bitches ain't shit to me. I give a fuck. Why don't you pay attention? Approach it with a different proposition. I'm a corrupt hoe. You'll never, never be, be my, my only one. one. Trick ass, ass bitch. No fun. Well, how about when, when no. Snoop Dogg said, I fucked on the floor so I wouldn't mess up the bed. Then little half dead put his dick, dick on in her the head. head. <laughs> Legendary and shit. And Snoop is a, a family a friendly, family friendly right. artist right now. Look, you, can't, you can't fault little half dead because he didn't say he assaulted her or he disrespected her. All he did was lay his dick on her head. Right. She come like, in like, quit playing so much half dead. Get your dick off my head. We don't play like that. That's, that's but why she, it was not, never no anger. That's why I wish Pimp C yes. would have stayed alive, man. Pimp C, I don't Pimp know if it was a joking dick on right the head. Now, what the man. Shit? You know what I mean? Right. You think Pimp C would have been doing commercials? Pimp C would have been doing commercials if the pimp was still alive. What kind of commercials? Just, uh, any type of commercial. State Farm, all that shit. Are you in good hands, bitch? Like, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you. The times have changed. Hold on, bitch. Left all that busted ass insurance alone. No, I'm time out. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking Pimp C said, I got, to... a, I got a young brown stallion and she's 20 years yeah. old. When you pop it from the back, I you see, see the hairy, hairy asshole. Whoa. Not nigga, only was he into pussy hair, he was hairy into asshole. hairy asshole. Yo, after Pimp C said that line, I was always looking for hair in the asshole. Uh, yeah. I felt like I wasn't getting the right type of women because there was no hair in the goddamn asshole. Bro, you can't even find a, a, hair, a pussy with some hair in it. We are going to get <laughs> shut down. No, it's not. Episode. We just reminiscing about the old times. Yeah, right. I mean, but that's maybe the, that's I, why we were so mean to women. They had hair in their fucking asshole. I mean, no, nah, that was probably you know what. I think you know why I think it's changed I'm because it's for a whole lot right easier now. to be offended now. You yeah. back in the day, in order yeah. for you to be offended, you had to get up and go yeah. out into the world and yeah. be offended. Go yeah. hold some picket signs or some shit somewhere. Show up to a concert and yeah. stand outside. Now you can give your opinion publicly and privately at the same time, so you can be offended while sitting in your living room doing mm. nothing. So I, it's easier to and it's more influential. Yeah, if you get a bunch of people tweeting about a company, they'll drop something. When people would pick it outside of a company, nothing. Nobody would gave ever a fuck. Happen. Like, can you park in the back? Those you dickheads are out there. Yeah, that's the purpose. You know what, though? I had that com- You know what's so funny? You, you're right, but I, I had this conversation with David Allen Greer about the Living Color, and he said, back in the day, you really had to work to complain. Because right. you had to write letters. Yeah. And yeah. then the fax machine came, yeah, and you had to right. send the like, fax. I'm, I'm going to yes. say this. Yeah. All of that shit is fake. What you, you mean? Protests of people. Like, I did a show with Michael Vick, the Michael Vick comedy officer. They never let the shit come out because the fucking dog people showed up and mm-hmm. they were protesting. Peter, you mean? No, no like, yeah, like an animal this? rights yeah, group. Yeah, yeah, got you, They won't even necessarily say it was Peter or whatever, but right. it was just some people who came out and protested and they were out there for like three hours until he went over there and everybody wanted to take a fucking picture. I'm no. like, are you bitches upset or are you just <laughs> fucking up the money right now? Fans, you know what I mean? Yeah, they all wanted to take pictures, man. It's, it's crazy how it's changed because in Living Color couldn't come on now. Nope. Hell no. They had a they whole had a sketch, sketch about a handicapped superhero. Right. Yeah. Which was actually sketch. empowering, they, though. It was hilarious. Yeah. They had a sketch. It's a sketch that, I man, go back and watch this sketch. Like, when you watch this sketch, if you think about it playing now, like, it's, it's scary to think that it coming on TV now. It was a sketch they did. I can't remember the white lady name, but she was a realtor. And all of the different races of people came to see the house. And she was saying all of the stereotypical shit about the reason I why do they remember would enjoy that. the house. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. She was like, oh, the black dude came to Tommy Davidson came in. She was like, oh, hey, how you doing, brother? You'll love this place. You can fall asleep to the sound of gunshots every night. It's a <laughs> ghetto right around the block. Then the Asian dude came and she was doing all types of racist Asian jokes. And the shit was funny. But now, 
world will be like offensive. You are, you're out of here immediately. Right. And the funny part about the Living Colors, they used to make fun of everybody. Everybody. Everybody used to get. They used to go at Farrakhan. Yeah. Mike Tyson, white people, gay people, handicapped yeah. people. Everybody. Sometimes would get it. I I watch Family Guy and I be like, Hey man, fuck y'all. <laughs> Why they be racist? <laughs> they be racist. Oh, fuck. You racist. ain't racist. seen the episode where <laughs> Peter finds his black relatives? <laughs> no. I never used to watch that shit. I thought oh, Cleveland God. was his black they relative. Legendary with the racism and that they go at everybody on Family Guy. The Jesus, everybody. They disrespectful. But it's if you if you appreciate comedy, you understand that there's nothing that's not offensive to somebody. Right. If you're not offending somebody, then the joke isn't really funny because Do you if think it's, it's funny, then it's going to Is that to true offend. though, Chico? Yes. You, every funny joke is going to it's going to offend someone. Yeah. yeah. Every There's funny no joke victimless is, humor. No, right. At all. No such thing. Really? No. Yeah, you do a joke about big titties, little titty, little titty women get mad. <laughs> yep. Fat asses, little asses. Black people, white people, every, it's, everything you talking about, somebody I'm like, oh, that ain't true. Fuck See, I'm you. never a good gauge because I don't have a, I don't care. Like, I, I, like, I like the laugh. I've seen you laugh at some fucked up I shit know, before, man. man. That's the only some, shit. Some shit, <laughs> some shit as a black man, I was like, nigga, how you gonna laugh at that, Charlamagne? <laughs> Like, you just said some shit the other day where you was like, watching Power is the only time I cheer for the white man. I was like, what? It's the truth, though. Man, delete that shit. We don't, we, don't ever, we don't ever cheer for the white man. I don't give a fuck what's going on. I hate Probably. all the black characters on Power. <laughs> Not Not all, all, all of them, man. Privately, you do it. Privately, you gonna root for the white man. <laughs> Not, I don't do that shit publicly. You can do it privately. I don't want this motherfucker winning <laughs> shit. You know what I mean? Who are you yeah. privately rooting for? What, what white people you Oh, man, it's a lot of privately... Uh, White people I root for that I'm a fans of privately. Like, uh, what's my man name that made uh, that song? Hold up, Sailing before you even say it. See, when well, we a fan of white people, we never know their name. It's just my man. You ever know this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Chris, 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 <laughs> something. I can't remember his last name. I don't know. But hey, like hey, a lot of white hey, what's my man? Who was uh? <laughs> Who was my man it? that was the yeah. Joker. What's his yeah. name? Oh, Joaquin Phoenix. Yeah, we don't never know their name. We never know. What's my man? Now you know how we feel. Hold up, that's we got to shout out Dion. Dion Cole got a funny ass joke on you. That. That I gotta watch this shit. He got a new special about how when black people love white people, we'll never know their fucking name. Gotta check that. Yeah. That's Who is true. this? Who is Dion, Dion Cole? Oh, I love Dion Cole. Cole. Dude, when I used to when I used to go up in the black rooms in New York, I would get brought up as just the last Jewish guy that they knew. See, what's a black room? A room with a lot of black people in it? No, it's like uh The room's Hannibal Birds don't work like, in. A lot of times it's what in the a bar. fuck? Why are you calling it the chilling circuit? Nobody even eats chitlin no fucking more. <laughs> you know what? Isn't that like a southern thing? No, man, fuck that. They used to call it the chitlin circuit because motherfucking clubs used to actually sell chitlins in that bitch. But these were never clubs. These were always like it's in like a bar. I mean, yeah, you know, that's, that's, how, that's, that's, that's how like prominent that. racism is, man. They done forced us to the back roads and, and barbecue clubs and shit. Like, Ain't nothing wrong with the chitlin circuit, though. No, nothing. It's Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry, Tyler Perry, Tyler Perry done made a billion right. dollars in the chitlin right. circuit. But the thing is, the fucked up part about it is if you once you make the chitlin circuit too cool, they gonna come get it. Like, you know what? They I'm doing like that now. They gonna cut the chitlin circuit off for a chitlin or two. But what I'm saying, what is what is what is a black room? So, I mean, like, do you you serious? No, because they're like, that's my... No, I'm saying like, really? I, that's a good answer. answer. I'm really asking I like that answer. Oh, okay. Yo, you've been playing black rooms your whole life. No, no, you can't I'm fuck asking your opinion. Play you I'm know asking I know what opinion. the fuck it is. So no, who what? are we describing this to? So listen. So this is what I'm saying. My struggle <laughs> is an entertainer. Question. Say something a little racist. No, exactly. No, 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 no. Hey, Schultz, will you say something a little racist? I'm avoid all outrage. You're like, uh, are you serious? So what I'm saying, though. The black rooms are the rooms. There's like legendary New York comics that have hosted these shows for years. I mean, Smokey Suarez. Capone. Capone, Smokey. Drew Frazier. Drew, shout out to Drew. And then... Um, so what I'm saying, talent, though, is if I go do comedy ones. in a room full of white people, what is that called? Depends where it's at. Nah, what is that called? We call, we call those the alt rooms. No, it's not. No, you know, see, that's what I'm saying. I asked ask you that because it was whoa, like... Whoa, whoa. You do not want to have a room full of white people and call it the alt room in this era. All no, right? no, no. <laughs> it could be, be, be the all no, right room so in that what, So in New York, right, there's like the there's the mainstream room of the clubs. That's what they right? call it. That's what I'm stream. saying. So it's like no, if you no, do a room full of black people, no. it's a black room. But if you go to a white club and it's white people, they're like, oh, that's no, mainstream. You're, you're, not, you're comparing two things that aren't the same. The the rooms are a place that does comedy, but it's not a comedy venue. So it's at a restaurant or something like that. The alt rooms are the hipster rooms, is what they call and those are the ones in like Brooklyn as a bunch of like weird white people usually to perform. I've there. seen black people not work in black rooms. Right? I've no. seen Hannah. Those Burr, things not, ain't funny. Han, no, do. Hannibal funny, but Hannibal don't work in the black That's room. That's a different kind of... I'm not... See, you want to, uh, like, single out, but it's a lot of comedians no, that are dude. just in the game who, no, like, no, oh, I have the robe. crossover There's certain pills on the robe that they call the black club or the white club. Like, you go to, like... 
what is it like in Dallas? Like one room, one improv is like, oh, this is where the black acts come through, and this one is where. The, and I know it's because that's where they book me. Yeah, I mean, it's so like that. Is, what's that? The, the what's that? The comedy store in Virginia LA? Beach? They do where, a black. They, they do a the, white the show at eight o'clock, and they do a black show. They call it a black show. Well, they have a white headliner, and then they have a black headliner. It's really making it to walk upstairs and fucking struggle. So what? Shit don't make no sense. What low said is real. What low said they got a white show and a black show. And at like one of those funny bones in Virginia, they have. Have an early show where they have a white headliner, and right. then they have a ten o'clock show where they have a black. Right. So that's the black room. Hold on, are you saying Virginia right now is racist? Yes, very much. Holy shit! Just like the rest this of these motherfuckers, rocket doctor. <laughs> this is yeah. crazy. Yeah, what y'all spending y'all money on? Man, I see Chico over there blinked out. Oh hey, man, don't don't do that. <laughs> Do that. Chico don't, over there icy do as that. fuck. Don't do that. Like this is over years that they I saved light skinned Charlemagne money to Chico. get this. <laughs> yeah, really. Nah, I just you know for me, I really I like what I like. And right. I don't always like that shit. Like I you know, I just I'm able to get you know, get it at my disc you know, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh uh leisure. discretion, my yeah. leisure now. You know what I'm saying? But I ain't one of the motherfuckers that feel like I got to impress nobody else because I feel like if you start to buy things that really don't make you feel a certain way you're doing it to try to that's right you'll never be happy doing world. this shit yeah, absolutely I, I, I like what I like and I don't give a fuck how nobody else feel about it it's the shit I'm Question. into what you, you buying, guys Lopes? are talking about you guys are I talking buy cars. about people right mm. that now listen to your stuff Right? What you mean? Back in the day, we could all make jokes about the famous people that we see on television. Bro, you can't do that shit no more. I think they, they all, know you. Yo, I think now they always been listening. Say what? I think they always yeah, been listening. Now they DM us, so it's a weird thing. Like, you know every time you make a joke about a rapper or something like that, he's going to hear about it, and exactly. you might have met him, and you're going to bump into him somewhere. Do you have a different approach to it are you a little bit more concerned do you lean in harder no i mean it depends Be honest. On, it depends on what it is you're saying like it, that's a slippery slope because you aren't able to determine what somebody else interprets as disrespect you right never, you could, it's a joke you to you can, but that, you can never determine and that's a, the disrespect is subjective too because something that's disrespectful to you mm -hmm. isn't disrespectful to me so very true it's like a line that you have to toe but it's certain things that are just blatantly disrespectful. If you like a troll like Charlemagne, like some of the shit <laughs> is just unnecessary. <laughs> you know what I mean? You don't have to say that. You can just leave motherfuckers alone. You just being mean. <laughs> you know what I mean? I haven't but, been mean in a long time, Chico. Chico. Man, so what? But you still, one of the most, you like you did the top five crackheads, you like one of the top five trolls in, in that history, nigga. You know what I mean? You're an old soul, Chico. I mean, but you have like the situation that happened with you and Nip, God bless the dead. Like the way that y'all handle that, the way that you said that you handle that, that's something that can happen with somebody who has you know the be the ability to be able to conversate and say hey this is why I didn't like what you said this is why I, I was man don't give that nigga too I, I much credit he still ain't fixed that shit with Birdman <laughs> no that shit ain't getting fixed probably <laughs> I don't have no problem with Birdman but he don't fuck with me he don't fuck with you you know why all. he don't fuck with me because I can't stop saying what I'm saying and my only thing I'm saying is why do you keep signing with Birdman when you, he got a reputation for not paying people I don't know I don't know I don't know, I don't know but Nip the, the Nip shit was fucked up though because I knew better as a man than to do what I did. Because I didn't know that him and Lauren was together, but that don't got nothing to do with nothing. I ain't had to say nothing about that woman's weight. You mm. understand what I'm saying? At the right. time. So that was just it's fucked gross. up on my part. It's I gross. knew I knew better right. than to do that. But man, one thing about that social media shit, nigga, you will get caught up doing some shit you ain't got no business doing and saying some shit you ain't got At no business saying. Because that shit is like a stage. And you feel like... It was at one point where everybody was just trying to out... Out... Fucking troll each other. Tro I don't, yeah, I don't mm. want to say troll. But it's a worse word than that. I was shocked. You wanted, yes, yes, that's what it was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you wanted to say the most shocking the shit most about people. Shit. I can't believe they said this about that person, this and that. Yeah. So it was. It, it, we everybody got caught up in that for one moment. But now you've been on that for a while, right? Now you guys are at this stage where, like, the people that you're talking about, that you make jokes about, even at the show, even you're you're making fun of someone in the crowd. You're dressed like blah blah blah. This that the the person you're referencing is gonna call you. And are you? Are, do you stop? No, I can't let your personal feelings fuck with my art. Uh -huh. Like we'll deal with that. <laughs> Listen, you know me, I love it. Uh, we'll deal with that shit later. Like that's a you, good line. If it's that serious, bro, security can right. escort you out, or yeah. you can and get on social have you media been about it? and Has leave anybody? a bunch of comments. Nah, whatever you need to do, nothing. Like, like, whatever you need to do to express yourself, do that shit. As long as you don't fucking touch me, you good. Right. Yeah. And I, I wouldn't say that we speaking on anything that is not 
public knowledge. You know what I mean? It ain't like I'm saying, hey, man, that motherfucker don't know how to fry chicken. Stupid yeah. motherfucker. Like, it's not anything yeah. personal. It's, if you're that's talking about You know that's what I mean? Nah, that's, that's the, the most, shit. No, yeah. what he said is the truth. Personal thing in the world. All of these artists know what niggas is saying about them. They Can't all got social no media. Yeah. So don't, just because you can put a face to it, don't get mad at them. Niggas right. get mad at, get, they'll get mad at you because they know Chico B. But Meek Mills, they know Carlos. Meek they know Mills said that shit different, bro. It's like, like when you get to a certain status, you can't even joke with your homeboys no more because that shit hurt different. Yeah, because you said it. Yes, because uh, there's like envy. There's a little. There's a little jealousy. There's some resentment. Well, it's kind of a mixture of all of that. But it's like once you the once you the you know the success in the room, it, it hurt different yeah. coming from you. By the way, like, dude, by not the way, your guy saying your shoes ain't shit. Meek hey, Mill said your Carlos, shoes ain't shit. Not only shit. are you Come right. On, yeah. But that shit happens all the time. That shit ain't gonna never stop. Right. Meaning, like, you can be in the rooms with other professionals. Right. And because you are who you are, yes. yeah. you gotta walk a certain way because you might hurt them motherfuckers' feelings. Right. But they I've can talk been, to you in your kind of way but that's all the goddamn time. Out, that's how you find out who your real friends are when you start to have success because it's right. the people you can act yourself around still. Yes. We've been around motherfuckers who are way more successful than us and they real insecure. They try to watch and be like, oh, well, get him off stage or why, why he saying this or why he got all those people over there or why is he doing this? And like, nigga, you are who you oh are. I'm yeah, just right. in the atmosphere enjoying all this shit is new to me. Yeah, you used to it. You. They so you don't respect it. You don't even energy. enjoy the shit the same way I do. That's energy. That's <laughs> something about the energy that you can't, you know, it, you can't fake that. You can't recreate that. We you can be doing the same thing as somebody, but your energy just isn't the same as mine. Yeah. Whatever it is, you the world that whatever world you living in, you aren't as connected to it as I am to mine. So you're not gonna ever be able to give the same type of you emit the same type of energy that I am because you don't have the same connection that you have to whatever it is you have going Absolutely. on. You're not dedicated enough mm -hmm. to it to be you know, to be secure, to be able to say, I don't give a fuck what you think about what I got going on. Like that comes from that comes from for me, that comes from my upbringing. Like you know, my father was murdered, so I didn't. I had to take on the responsibility that a man was supposed to do in a lot of ways in my house. So when my friends was outside playing football and riding their bikes, I had to walk to the grocery store with the cart to get the groceries for the house. And I remember one day I was pissed off about it. And my Aunt Murray, who I got on my chain, God bless her, like I came in the house and I was like, man, I don't want to go to the store. She was like, what's wrong with you? All the niggas at the grocery store know me by name. All the people that work in there know me. I just was feeling like, man, I don't want to do this shit. And she was like, okay, you got a choice. Here's your choice. You could either figure out how to not give a fuck about what your little friends think about you handling your responsibility, or you can just tell your mama you ain't doing that shit no more. I'm like, well, that's an easy choice. <laughs> I ain't telling her shit. Or but that helped me understand the importance of opinion. Everybody is entitled to their opinion, but I'm entitled not to give a fuck about it. Yeah. Like I have the ability to be able to utilize whatever it is I want to have going on and be secure enough in it to where you can think whatever you want to think about what I'm doing. But as long as I'm not knowingly hurting myself or nobody else, who gives a fuck what you think? That's a great point. I think I think a lot about um, opinions nowadays because we're so surrounded by the opinions of other people. But I always ask myself, do we really give a fuck about what these people think or do we give a fuck because we know the shit that they're saying is not true and you just have a, 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 a nature in you that just wants to say, Nigga, stop lying. No, mm. but no, but that's like, to me, that's like walking past a line of people and ignoring a line of people that's trying to give you $100 to go argue with the motherfucker that's asking you for $100. Yeah, 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 yeah. It makes no sense. It's like they're not offering, this person is not offering you anything, but you will rather stay and give your energy to somebody who has nothing for you rather than to pay attention to the things that are beneficial to you. But that's yeah. just a mentality that you got to kind of break yourself out of. And it's tough, especially with all of this access that you have to people telling you how they feel about you. But I just, you you know, like I said, growing up, I never had the luxury of dependency. Everything that I was wanted, I had to go get on my own. So that makes you become numb to what people think. Because when I'm going to the barbershop to work or riding 18 stops to Whole Foods to bag groceries, people are like, man, what the fuck are you doing that shit for, man? Nigga, we outside, bro. You right. missing something. No, I'm not. I got. I want the Jordans when they come out next week. And my mama not buying that shit. Hmm. And your mother yeah. might. Or you might just be okay with not having them. I'm not okay with not having them, and I know my mama not buying them. So I got to, I got to fix that. I got to do something about that. So now living in the world that we live in, I understand that everything that I do is gonna come with, hmm. you know, scrutiny. That's a part of celebrity. That's a part of been a part of celebrity for years. It just get to you a whole lot quicker than it used to. Like you said, David Adagris said, it took a long time for yeah. you to hear the hate or see the hate. Because nine times out of ten, people not going to walk up on you and say the shit they wrote in the comment on Instagram. <laughs> no, they're going to ask for a picture. Yeah, they ain't yeah. never going to say that shit to you. You know what I mean? They're not going to say it, but it's, it's just you got to figure out a way to not let that affect you, to not let the opinions of strangers 
affect your day to day actions. It just I've, I've, no I've never been talked to in person the way I get talked to online. Oh, they would never know, talk to me nice. like this. Like it's, I mean, talk, when yeah. I say it's rare, it's rare. Like. Yeah. Very rare. Because like, motherfuckers don't really feel like they They just want somebody to come through and like that goofy ass shit. Bro, it happens all the time when... I mean, I seldomly respond to a negative tweet or comment, but when you do, 90% it of the time... It make you look like you hurt and shit. It does. <laughs> and then you look pussy, but like 90% of the time, the response from them is... Yo, I was just playing, man. Ooh, Big fan of your work, yeah. and I was like, "That's it. From now on, yeah. now you just want attention. You're too insecure yeah. to like say, hey, good job.' Yeah. What, what I'm curious about, you guys, is how do you guys manage the ego of success? Like, it's random that a group of three people comes up, and you know, you see it in bands all the time, where like, you know, they start to like split up, or one person doing this. You got the internet pumping all of you guys up. Like, Chico fans are going, "Yo, you're the greatest." Carlos fans, "You're the greatest." DC, "You're the greatest." So. Do you guys sit down and are you like, yo, we're not going to let that fuck with us? No, nah, man, we don't have to do yeah, that. Well, we already that know us. who we are. Yeah. We were already who we were before we even started this. So it's like because you guys were already friends when you guys had nothing, the success isn't affecting a nah, friendship. It, no, no, because we all. fans of each other. Like, right, right, I actually right. want to see this man do good. I actually right. want to see DC good, do good. It's not like I'm like, oh, they're too successful. They're going to leave me. Right, like, right. nigga, this is what this is for. Yeah. Like, we are formulating right here because out of these three, one of us is going to be a, you know what I mean? Or all of us. But we are pushing each other to be great. There is no jealousy at all with this Not shit. Not at all. And this is what keeps me humble in that regard to where I never even allow my ego to reach that point is that the things that I would consider to be nu nuisances in my life now seven years ago would have been the solution to every problem that I had. <laughs> like what? Like anything. Like, Welcome oh, to man, success. I got to pay a thousand dollars for a flight. Or it up. Seven yeah. years ago, nigga, a thousand dollars? Nigga, I, I ain't going. I'm not boy, going. I got a Jeep. That shit wasn't even an option. I'll drive, my nigga. I'm going to drive. So it's like, why, I, I can never allow myself to get so caught up in what I have going on to think that I'm bigger than anything, especially nobody's bigger than the program. And what we have going on and what we're able to do comes from a place of us being able to build. Like, we used to walk to the, our first season of Wild and Out, we used to walk to the Western Union to send $50, $60 home, hmm. washing our clothes in the laundry room at a hotel. Like, it, that was the reality. So, it's, it, it'll never, no matter how much success we achieve, and it don't, not necessarily just saying it because we came from that, but no matter how much success we achieve, you can never forget the fact that when before we had any of this shit going on, we were able to build with nothing. Yes. When right. we had nothing that's, going that's on. That's the best people to come up with, man. That's why I love my wife so much, man. I know y'all not fucking each other, but that's why I love... <laughs> that's why I this love... This nigga say the weirdest nigga, shit for no reason. No, man. I'm telling you, that nigga got a gimp in his basement. No. I don't know if y'all are fucking or not, but I mean, it'll probably prove y'all no. relationship. You know what I mean? Y'all should give it a shot one time. Bro. Well, I'm just saying... <laughs> when you, you and your homeboy, y'all love the sword fight? You know what I'm saying? No, motherfucker. No. <laughs> when you come up with somebody from the bottom and they know you your struggle, up with somebody from the bottom. You know, hey, she gonna be looking so disgusting. I'm just cause I know that you still trolling. You talking about I ain't a troll. You troll. That's a troll shit you do. Try to sneak in some homosexual oh, activity every chance you get. For no reason. So uh if you guys ever uh, watch football naked, like what? Whoa, whoa, whoa. The fuck does that have to do with anything? No, I'm just saying, you know, cause it's just it's really tough now with the way he's like. Hey, hey man, I got a question. As a man, how often do you use your nipples? Uh, Fuck this all, man. I got a question. <laughs> I'm going to use that one for real. Oh, my God. This guy's so crazy. But now, nah, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of like me and Duval. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, people wonder why I root for Duval the way that I do it. Because, like, we... I seen fuck. that shit. Uh -huh. I was picking that nigga up when I had mad clothes in my fucking. <laughs> see, who said it? Somebody said it. No, he said it. That's cool. He white. That big game's like that. You know what That's I mean? That's our they favorite game. Put their dick on each other, forehead like us. Uh, we learned it you from know? the red oh, man. Man. Yeah, yeah, man. Hey, hey salty <laughs> sleep. <laughs> hey, why the put fuck? Put it in his nostrils. <laughs> Hey, why the fuck was his name Little Half Dead though? Hey man, that's, that's a hard ass name. Hey man, hey, that's just that, that California like it's it's a, I always like to plug Slim shit when I get a chance. It's a YouTube uh, uh, page that I subscribe to and I watch a lot called Kev Mac Videos. I don't know who and, that is. Uh, Kev Mac Videos is a dude out of L.A. He's from the '60s and he interviews all of the old OG gangbangers from L.A. Oh wow! Like, and all of the historic guys, all of the big name guys who helped start the info and just to 
see how how deep they take that culture. And then some of the names, little beer can. You know what I'm saying? All the type, man, you got to watch this shit. Yeah. Some of these niggas got some of the craziest names you'll ever hear in your life. But it's just, you can tell that that culture is just the way that they, whatever it is you did, that's what they named you. Do you know what I mean? So, so you, why was he little half dead then? I mean, because he, he got shot in the always, head, though. Oh, I know that. Uh, yeah. See? Yeah. So he half, half dead. dead. Yeah. He probably was half dead at some point, and they named him. That's you know just I mean? lazy. Yeah, boy. <laughs> you just don't want to learn somebody's yeah, name. Right. It's just some ghetto get hood shit. Yeah. They called you little freaky nigga. You <laughs> know what I mean? That would be your name. Little suspect. Little half gay. <laughs> 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 hey, you know what though? I know y'all gotta get out of here, man. It's interesting to me that Chico, you said you never fathomed this shit. Like you never dreamed it, you never envisioned it. Because you know they no, always I tell people su- I envision success. Okay. But I didn't envision the specifics that people ask you to give them when they say what's next. Got mm-hmm. you, got you, you got you, got you, got you. I've always envisioned success. I've always seen myself being successful. I've always we sit and have conversations about you know just how amazing the journey that we've been on thus far has been but for me to have to give when you somebody walk up to you and be like all right nigga when the movie's coming and it, it's like I, first of all you can't that that comes with being an entertainer but you you're an asshole if you do that to a regular person like if somebody work at Starbucks be like all right baby you on frappuccinos now we gonna start <laughs> hey when you gonna open your own shit bro open your own shit we gonna start eating up the sauce nigga Come so, on, bro. Like, You've been here four, five years. <laughs> right. It's right. just coffee. You're right. Exactly. You're right. How hard is it to become the next coffee mother? It's like, so it's, I just, I ask people that all the time. I, when people say that, man, when, when you going to be in movies, when you going to do this, I, what you do for a living? Like, what if I came to your job and asked you that? Would you, would, how would you feel about having to give an answer to that? Yeah. Because we don't really have any connection. You're just looking for me to justify whatever it is you got in your mind so you can go tell people when you see me, yeah, I I had to I had to ask that motherfucker about this, that, and the third. Yeah, I don't yeah. mind the question, hmm. but my answer is always going to be reflective of man, I, whatever's next is what's next. It's also hmm. their idea of success, not right. yours. Exactly. Like they might grow up going, the only way you're successful in entertainment is if you're in movies. As if it looks Where, like I think it should look. Exactly. And, and Whereas your idea way. of success might be complete. You just want to do stand up. We're living it. We're walking in it. So do you'll you, never be. I don't able to feel understand. successful. Every what day a, I wake up, I feel like I ain't did shit. What a, like oh, I feel like every day I gotta get up and prove myself. Like, did you I envision anything, Losto? Did you have a dream? Like, bro, I, where I'm from, I never even thought that this shit was possible. Like, the, when I moved to Atlanta, I didn't move to Atlanta to do comedy. I was just getting the fuck out of Mississippi. Yeah. And I had started doing, like, some improv and shit, and then I took that shit on stage, and then it's like, the comedy shit just happened so fast, just go around the world with it. And then it's like, now... I don't feel like none of that shit even matters. Like, every day I get up, I got to find something to do. I got to find some kind of way to get in front. Even if these people follow me, I got to find something to do in front of a million motherfuckers. You yeah. know? I, don't, I don't harp on nothing I've done. I don't feel successful at all. I mean, but you got to really? invest in yourself, yeah. though. That's just the, And I'm not just talking about financial, mental investment. You got to mentally invest in yourself every day. That's something I strive to do every day. Right. Every day I strive to mentally invest in myself. I take time to just drive my car for an hour or two or whatever I got to do just to be able to be in my own space stay and mentally healthy and stay in my yeah. head and stay away from the, the things that society tell you that you're supposed to subscribe to it just don't work like that for me and like I said my background makes me the way that I am I grew up different my father got killed when I was two this is my uncle Reggie he was killed in 2002 and I don't remember losing my father but this nigga was the closest thing that I had to mm-hmm. a father figure in my life of all the other men that I was blessed to be mm-hmm. around and when he died I remember when, the, when they pulled the plug on me, passed away, I walked out the hospital room and I was walking towards the exit and my everything, I'm, I never felt like this before. I'm I'm sad, I'm angry, I'm hmm. vengeful, I'm I'm sick, I'm everything. And then I remember I, Howard Hospital in D.C., when you walk out the exit, it's like a courtyard. And hmm. when I walked out into the courtyard, everything was moving. All right, man, I see you at lunch. All right, baby, excuse me, young brother. Like, And I realized then that you were in control of your world. Right. And the world will always function, mm. no matter what it is you got going on. Right. The world is the world. That's gonna keep spinning. Yeah. Yeah. Similar yeah. story because it's like my mother had passed away on my way to a show. I was driving to a show, like I'm almost there, like an hour away. I got a call that my mother passed. Oh, yeah, I'm headlining. This was 2013, New Year's Eve. Damn. That's the day I lost my mom. So I was headlining my New Year's Eve show, and I'm like there. 
So I had to go and perform this shit two whole hours. I didn't even get to take a minute to be like, you know what I'm saying? What the <laughs> fuck just happened? So that that day right there changed everything for me. So I know even like at the worst, even at my lowest point, broken heart, whatever, whatever, I still could do this shit. I could tell jokes with my fucking eyes closed. So I never worry about no shit like that. And it's just like that changed my whole perspective. What was the performance like? Were, were you more locked in? Standing were you less? ovation. It was just like, I don't even remember the shit I'm saying. I yeah, just yeah, was yeah. going, this is like, this shit was automatic. That shit probably was a good release for you in that moment though. Yeah, it definitely you know was. So it's just like that, that story right there is just like, you. St it started to make you prioritize everything and right. show you what's important, like what you can invest your energy into yeah. and what, what really doesn't something. mean That's shit. That's why right. I go home so much. That's why I love going home to Mouse yeah. Corner, man. Yeah, I yeah. mean, it, what it puts shit in perspective. Oh, you and then think of how many motherfuckers who made it to that level can't go home, can't go to the neighborhood that they grew up in. Yeah. There's a, um, I mean, I'm sure you guys grew up watching comedy, right? You guys seems like, yeah, seem yeah, like definitely. connoisseurs of comedy. Yeah, definitely grew up watching it. Do you ever... <laughs> Do you ever like sit back and reflect and go like, okay, those were our heroes growing up and then, and go, holy shit, we're like on that path now that there are young kids watching us in oh, a way yeah. we watched yeah. those people. That's I, the reason why I, you know, I, I still take every picture, you know what I mean? Especially with young people yeah. because I always liken it to if I would have saw what I know I am to them. As a young man, yeah. how would I have wanted that person to treat me? Yeah. If I walked up on Martin in the mall, yeah. how would I have wanted Martin? Yeah. Yeah. For real. You know what I mean? How would I have wanted Martin, my interaction with Martin to be? Yeah. And I try to make sure that it that I try to give that type of interaction to young people because you never know. That could be the thing that shapes them into believing that. And you uh, definitely don't want to be watching TV 20 years from now. Yeah, Chico Bean shitted on me. Yeah. Been yeah. my biggest driving force. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's just nuts to like, just to kind of be in that moment. I always try to do that. You know, it's, it, it, I mean, you can imagine success. You can imagine these things that are happening. You can imagine like the downfalls of the industry as well. But it's often hard to just sit in and go, "Wow!" Like this is happening right now. The dream that I had. I'm inside of. Man. Yeah, that's, that's why this part. shit is so amazing because it's like every day you living beyond your wildest. You're like, you've lived. All, you've what done all the, the shit fuck? you wanted to do. Yeah. Like, you, like, all the shit is just extra at this point. Do you think that at the Apollo? Your mind. Like yes. you're at the fucking Apollo. Yes. You walk on, you rub the fucking wood and are you like going through this flashback of all the times watching it? Like, right. yes. yes. Hey, I'm going to tell y'all something. I got a lot more that I want to do. Um, but if, if, if this was it, I would be happy. I'm yeah, not tripping, I mean, no, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, thank you, God. You you, know? you you can have goals and aspirations for yourself, and I we all do. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying, feeling the need to feel the pressure to appease people who don't have any vested interest in you getting to the point that they say you should get to. Mm. You know what I mean? You shouldn't have it. That shouldn't affect you. Then what you the goals you set for yourself and how you try to manifest things for yourself should mean everything to you. You know what I think about success? I think that success. You're truly successful when your dreams don't just concern you anymore. Exactly. You know right. what I'm saying? When your dreams are about impacting other people, you know, and how you can empower and influence other people. Like, to me, you get to a certain point where you got to be selfish to a certain extent. Exactly. And then when you realize, like, man, the shit that really makes me happy right now is helping other people. Exactly. You know? So I think that's what, that's, 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 that's what I see with y'all, you know, Man, you a That's big why you got a 30 man on man. You're a big inspiration too. I just yeah. did my first back to school drive in my hometown. I seen you doing that shit for yeah. the past couple of years. Yeah. Yeah, man. We gave we around 5,000 backpacks, man. Hey. We, always, yeah, we <laughs> always give like credit to you uh, as you specifically because when we came in to the to the Wild and Out fold, you know what I'm saying? They they wasn't they didn't think we was going to be shit for real. They, for real? Yes. Honestly. No, my bro. We, we was the two stars that like they never thought would happen. Like we was, ne we never. Was, <laughs> I ain't seen nobody no, else, bro. No, we were never dude, on their radar. <laughs> no way. I remember the audition. You remember you when we there. auditioned? Yeah, yeah, we were all there. And I specifically remember both of you. I remember you, Vlos. You made fun of. What was Nick's like uh, Dorian, African Dorian, guy? Yeah. Dorian, Dorian, uh, the big yeah. black dude. Mighty yeah. kept calling him Mighty Joe Young. Yeah. <laughs> he was, he was, you know, and he was wearing this like brown jumpsuit yeah. with these like white uh, sneakers or something like that. And then Lois goes, "Man, you look like a black and mild or something." Like that. <laughs> <laughs> But Nigga, meant, I remember that, that shit too. That, that, that meant was, anything like, and and even Nick Nick said it to us 
after that first season, we're like, man, y'all niggas stars, man. Y'all gonna be stars. You know what I mean? He always was he always said it, but in regards to that space that you don't have no control over, that executive space and all of that, they yeah. didn't look at well, us. Well, they don't know shit no way. But still, but yeah. for us yeah. coming into the game, you think that that's necessary for nah. you to feel validated as a star. And it took us to not get that and be able to go out and touch the people and see like, oh, this yeah, shit and it didn't, don't it didn't happen immediately. Yeah. It didn't no, happen. It's, it's inevitable. When did y'all Sometimes get on Wild Up? 2013. 2013. But that's the thing. It's like, I've noticed, I've always noticed people that take advantage of opportunities like and take advantage of moments. It's not just like being big, but it's it's being... It's being great in moments. Like I remember watching the the the, the hip hop cipher, the comedy cipher that you guys mm -hmm. did, right? And I'm watching specifically for you guys, and I'm like, are they gonna be rappers or comedians in this moment? Because the win is being comedians. Yes, mm -hmm. and that's I, the approach that I took. To I know it. both we of both you did. took it, but and I, and I remember watching. But the and, but the other ones on it, like Atheon, like really came with like bars. Mm -hmm. But I was like, that's not for you to do. Now it's jokes, and you said the thing about. Uh, was it was it Jess? Is that mm -hmm. girl? And uh, it was like the what did she? What did he say? Take that wig off, shit, nigga. Was it? Yeah, I was trying to get yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, troll, look, a whole troll, you man. You think you can catch me, bro? You're not gonna be able to do it. You think you can catch me, bro? Come on. So, so, and it's like you guys came with the lines that are gonna be memorable, and they're going to be tweeted, and people are gonna react to those lines. And it would be so easy as hip hop fans to get caught up in, man, I'm just gonna deliver bars. Everybody got bars. Yeah. What is gonna stand out? And when you guys went for, it, I was like. All right, they but get that's it. what that's what we do. We've always done that. Like we've always done the shit that we fuck with. Like that old school battle came from exactly. Lowe's in the break saying, "Hey, bro, bet you don't want battle old school, nigga. Let's run it." You know what I mean? And that ain't nothing that you the, the structure of what they wanted to have happen and all that. We was like, whatever, we gonna do right. this shit. Because there's been a lot of people on the show who they were just trying to push so hard. And, and just, but you get, can't, they gave you can't force it on people. Exactly, you can't do it. Either people fucking with you or they not. I, I, I don't. I, that's weird to me because I everybody knew DC because of the Instagram. Mm -hmm. Even then, though, MTV bought DC in because he had that following. Mm -hmm. They didn't really get DC no, like that. I remember when I ended up being at all. No, when that's I the best thing about DC though. Is however good you think he is, he's better he's than better that. Better than that. No, that's why real. I love him. Like, he's like I've literally seen people be like, ah, he's just gonna go over there and fuck it up. But then he goes over there and he literally like fucks it up to yeah. the point where they were like, damn, we didn't know he could do all that. We didn't know this nigga could sing, mm -hmm. dance, do backflips, ski, uh, ride a jet ski. <laughs> nigga know how to put babies to sleep. He can moonwalk. Motherfucker has great memory. He can read. He's spontaneous. It's like, this motherfucker is way more than you would ever think. Right. And, but, and you being able to see that in us so early is something we appreciate because you always, you know, made sure that you reached out and said, hey, man, I want to give you an opportunity. I remember we did Guy Court. That's what we met at on the yeah, set. Yeah, yes. You know what I mean? And, and yeah, I fuck that. I'm the only nigga on here never been on that shit. Yeah, it, it, it was only one season. Nah, I met you before Guy Court. Because when you, when you auditioned, Dolly introduced me to you. you oh, yeah, but you yeah. didn't know me then. You was just like, what's up, nigga? And that was it. You know what I mean? <laughs> nah, and Dolly way, was like, yo, you got to check out we, Chico. We, we, this nigga we funny. We met I mean, once we worked it, why well, I say that's the first time we worked together. And I remember I did that juice box argument. And he was like, yo, that shit was amazing, man. That You you know, I, we went to that little party afterwards and we talked. And he was like, man, I'm going to fuck with you. And I got some shit I'm trying to get in the works. And you kept your word with that. Word. And now that the world is kind of starting to recognize the shit that we done been doing for. Because we done laid a lot of groundwork up until this point for people to go back and watch and say, oh, these motherfuckers just ain't come out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. But you have always been one of the people who has showed us love and said, hey, man. Yeah, I fuck with y'all. I rock with y'all. You know what I mean? We appreciate that because you had a platform that you allowed us to be a part of before any most people did. Hey, thank y'all for pulling up, man. Bro. Give me y'all Twitters and Instagrams and all that <laughs> nah, shit. No, fuck that. We got enough followers. <laughs> hey. <laughs> I'm not about to fuck y'all. Y'all know my shit. If they don't know my shit, they've been there before. It's, man, this shit is not new. Yeah, I'm man. not going to tell you no, to follow this is, this me. Is if you family, listen to this, this whole shit that idiot up idiot to this family. point and you don't want to follow me, <laughs> fuck you. I don't give a shit. I'm good. <laughs> Listen, as always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. But if you think we're just a couple idiots who don't know shit, you're right, too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. Drop the bevel, Ed, bitches. To be an idiot. I don't know idiot, what happened to the bevel. Idiot, idiot. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for listening to this episode of uh, Brilliant Idiots. It's brought to you by BetterHelp. Whatever struggles you are facing from depression and anxiety to trauma and grief, BetterHelp can connect you with a professional counselor in a safe and private online environment. All right? It's so convenient. 
You can uh, schedule secure video or phone sessions as well as chat and text with your therapist. And anything you share is completely confidential. Best of all, it's a truly affordable option. Our listeners get 10% off your first month with a discount code IDIOTS. So why not get started? Just go to betterhelp.com slash idiots. Fill out a questionnaire to get matched with a counselor you'll love today. 